Thank you, the talented, lawful, stupid team for putting this recap together. Now everyone's all caught up and up to date. We can get stuck in to this juicy ancient Greek world, a pantheon. And last week, um, the party arrived in ancient Athens, a city which boggles the mind of anybody in the ancient world in purely its size and majesty and the wonders that have even today lost to the secrets of how they were constructed. Amphitheaters and the Parthenon, um, the Temple of Zeus, the Temple of Artemis, all these fantastic constructions that have surrounded the players and obviously struck awe with them as they made their way to the Penix and they um, effectively relinquished their claim to the title of hero. But the final thing that happened last week, why am I doing a recap when we just did a recap? <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to get into the mood of this as a DM yeah, with that. I want to make sure we're all in the <laughs> so, Hippocrates, a name known to many people, I'm sure our viewers, um, was approached by the party, found on the end of a wooden jetty, which sort of uh, jutted out into the ocean. Um, seems to be examining some kind of liquid that he'd scooped up and he'd come to some kind of conclusion that indeed there was some kind of poison in the bay that may or may not be something that the Greek populace has to worry about. But he was approached by the party and um, he saw his old friend Herodotus. And what I'll say is, would it be accurate for the party if we rejoined the, um, the present with their trip back from Piraeus to Athens? Because it if you recall, Hippocrates is in Piraeus, which you had to walk to, to um, speak with Hippocrates. So it's on the way back that um, he'll be engaging in idle conversation with you, Herodotus, as though it was only a day ago that he saw you. But by all accounts, it may have been some years, months, you're not quite sure. Um, but he just put a hand on your shoulder and he says, you will look much older than you did last time. Herodotus, I know it has only been mm, three years, mm, two years, but you seem to have aged so much more. I mean no offense. Tell me, what has caused your, um, what do you remember? Tell me what you, I know you've lost your memory, but do tell me if there's anything, anything at all. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid I don't remember nothing. A, a face, that was it. Ah, was a, it my a, face? A beautiful face. Oh, no, no. It was, a be it was a beautiful face. It wasn't yours. Oh, I see. That is quite rude, actually, Herodotus. I keep very good care of myself. I am well known to be the most groomed man in Athens. But I concede that beauty is not something I ascribe myself to. Oh, it was a woman. Then it is less likely it was me. That is correct, yes. Mm. Um, <laughs> this woman, do you know her? Do you know her name? Maybe she holds the secrets to your your memory being taken from you. No, I I, I do have this though. I don't know what it is, and I'll pull out the like, uh, the knot thing. Okay, sure. Uh, he'll hold his hand open. His sort of wrinkled old fingers, but sort of a very warm palm. Um, do you hand it to him? Yeah. All right. Yeah, he'll take it and he'll hold it up to the sky and sort of silhouette it against the sun. Squint one eye at it. And he'll look closer and he'll say, ah, yes, very interesting. I have no idea what this is, but I have never seen a design like it. This is from a place I have not visited, and I have visited many places. That at least narrows it down by elimination, you can say. Have you shown this to any of your friends here? Oh, no, I've just, I have just remembered about it. Well, let's... Uh, Talk to them. Maybe they would understand. Have any of you ever seen anything like this? And he'll hold his hand out. And it's basically a drawn to a very slow pace as you walk along, like, um, you know, half of walking speed as you engage in conversation and make sure that you're on an equal understanding of what's going on. Um, he basically puts his palm out in front of you. And what you see is a finely interwoven knot in different circular designs, crisscrossing over one another in what seems to be some kind of pattern made for aesthetic purposes, perhaps some piece of artwork or craft with no discernible practical purpose. But um, anyone who wants to can roll a history check, except for Kara, who can roll with advantage because of reasons which are obvious. <laughs> I was going to say, does he look like a Celtic knot? <laughs> 
you better roll and succeed now, Kara, because I can't <laughs> right. take that back. You know? Did you say history? <laughs> history, yeah, history. I got a six. Or her story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a six will not do it. You uh, you see this thing, it just looks like something like you'd find in the woods by a little mm, goblin maybe made it, some knick knick knack. <laughs> Doesn't look any, doesn't look too fancy. Those naughty goblins. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got a 13. <laughs> you got a what, sorry? A 13. Okay, right. Being that <laughs> it's from where you're from, I'd say that's a success. And yeah, you know that's from where you're from, Kara, effectively. Very close to where you're from, at least from the isle far to the north, very inapproachable by the people of Greece, the isle known as Britannia. Oh, yes. I recognize that. How, do you know how you got this? It, it's not from around here. It's from my homeland. Oh, where's that, dear? Oh, far, far to the north, north of the wall up in Britannia. Oh, oh apparently I'm a traveled man. I could have been there. I, I, don't, I look through my some paperwork and pull out loads of scrolls. Yeah, sure. Um, rifling through your scrolls, which I'm going to assume you've done in the past to try and understand oh, yeah, 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 history. Yeah. You don't find anything that specifically pertains to time spent in a place called Britannia. Even the word itself sounds a bit foreign on your tongue. It doesn't click with the sort of ancient Greek common tongue that you're used to. It sounds different and um, long for a name of a place. Um, but yeah, uh, Hippocrates will chip in and say, oh yes, uh, Britannia. I've never been, but I understand it is a very interesting place. Some say home of ancient magics, magics which can poison the mind. Perhaps Herodotus, you have breached too far with your explorations. Perhaps somebody has punished you for your curiosity, no? Oh, well, I suppose so. Hmm. Well, it's not impossible to restore the memory the same way it is not impossible to restore the skin over a wound and what i see you have herodotus is a wounded mind a mind leaking the memories and perhaps if we patch this this wound perhaps you will remember some things from your past but it will be a difficult task i have never approached this kind of mental medicine before we will need help and I know just the place to go. But first, I recommend we retire to the Temple of Asclepius. I have much to go over with my assistant there. He needs to be appraised of the situation with this. And he'll just hold a um, sort of a small jar that he's been carrying with him, which has sort of a uh, seawater in it. You know, seawater. You saw him scoop the seawater. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as you guys are walking along, um, is there anything you want to do on this sort of trip back? I'll remind you that you're in between two huge walls, which are sort of making a large corridor with a, you know, without a roof on it. Um, either side of you, they raise like 20 feet high, obviously built for wall, a uh, war, built for walls. Of course they are. Um, and it's a single road, which joins the port to the town, the city of Athens, its primary purpose, its only purpose to make sure that in a time of war, Athens would still have access to food via the sea. Does he have my knot back? If you ask for it, but he'll still be holding it and thumbing it and pushing it between his hands and around his things, trying to perhaps unravel it even at some points. I'm yeah. looking for stray dogs. <laughs> okay, make me an investigation check. Oh, that's so great. Let's see. Only a nine. Nine, yeah. None along here. This is a very well-kept area. There's so many buildings along here. Uh, maybe there's the odd one for maintenance of the wall or a tower or a parapet, a barracks maybe, but nowhere that a dog, a stray dog, could make itself home. Perhaps if you checked in main in the main city of Athens. Does it look like she's looking for something? Do we notice? Tara, do you want to make it seem like you're not looking for something? <laughs> oh, no, I'm I'm not trying to hide it or anything. Very well, I'll say that. It seems that, um, yeah, Kara's eye often wanders to stray corners of this um, this long road, perhaps looking for something. <laughs> You're not quite sure what, though, I'd say. Uh, are we being followed, dear? Oh, oh no, no. I, I was actually, I was looking for a dog. Um, that show we saw out front with Aesop and the little animals, he, he wants to add a dog to his repertoire, so I, I thought I'd help him out. So I was just keeping an eye out for a dog. 
I'm not going to um, game and say I look, but <laughs> I, 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 will, I will help her on the way back. That's a, a as good a reason as any to look if you've been told. So I'd allow that if you want it to do it. <laughs> I'll look, yeah. Investigation, yeah? Yeah, investigation. But um, yeah, go ahead, roll investigation. Oh, God. 11. 5 plus 6. <laughs> yeah, not enough again. Long road, very open, nowhere for dogs to hide and make a den if they needed to, you know. Um, is that what well, dogs I do? saw a cat. Is that good enough? <laughs> oh, I've had enough of cats for a while, I think. <laughs> We'll, just, we'll keep an eye out, perhaps in another part of town. Yes. Uh, Antigonus is also looks distracted. He's looking around for something. So I am looking DM for any familiar temples that um, uh, I may have grow, grew up in, as well as where that, probably too far <laughs> away from where the pottery <laughs> center is. I'm looking for any temples I grew up in. What a yeah. crazy question. <laughs> Did I grow up in that one, DM? Roll. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. Is you look for a temple. temple. You look for the temple you grew up in, and you do inside find that it is not in this area specifically. Okay, okay. Very well. But, um, I, I would also assume that the pottery shop is not where I, uh, not around be, here either. You would be correct to assume okay. this. this um, as you're walking along, um, Hippocrates is going to engage in idle conversation with you, still probing your questions of your histories. Welcome for the company. A man like Herodotus himself inquisitive and um, eager to understand people's histories. So he'll uh, first approach you, Pruitt. Um, um, I'm not there. I am there. coming back from the <laughs> yeah. library. Tec technically, <laughs> he's still approaching you, but he's just very, right. very far away. So. Sure. No, no, no. I'll, I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting for them at the temple of what, what's his name again? Asp Asbestos? S oh the temple of Asbestos. The most lethal <laughs> of gods. <laughs> <laughs> the slow killer. <laughs> No, we've been through this. It's not the Temple of Asbestos. It's not the Temple of Asclepius. It's the Temple of Asclepius. God of Medicine. God, God of Medicine. So, uh, you okay, know, I'm waiting small. there for Very the group well. to arrive. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and by this time, I'll remind the party that although it is a sun-scorched and very hot day, it is getting towards the mid-afternoon, given that you've walked some... 16 three, miles. Well, I'm, I'm going to say that was a bit excessive. I'd say <laughs> probably 15 and a half miles. So. There you go. <laughs> there and back, right? <laughs> yeah, you walk some distance uh, with an old man as well. So, um, yeah. yeah um, what do you mean? I'm jogging. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> But still, somehow, walk matching the walking speed of a normal person. So. <laughs> I'll be full sprint. Yeah, it's all right. You can sprint. I'm tempted to just make you make an athletics roll to sprint because you're an old man. <laughs> but all right. We had a discussion um, earlier in Discord that I'm actually ripped. Oh, right. That's interesting. <laughs> no, it's not. I could see it happening, maybe. <laughs> Ultimate reveal. Take a point in, like, take a level in Barbarian, and we'll discuss that possibility. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, making your way along, so um, he'll actually go to Antigonus then rather than Pruitt, but um, he'll ask the sort of same questions he had prepared for Pruitt, just sort of like, where are you from? What are you doing in Athens? You know, um, he'll just bombard you, um, often asking questions that interrupt your answers to the previous question, just sort of constantly, like, and what is uh, the orc's most desired dish in the morning? Is it, oh. as they say, I've heard, it is children. But I assume it is nonsense. You seem very upsetting to me. It's a bit of a translation issue. Uh, we, we eat baby goats, which are called kids. I think ah. that there's uh, an issue yes. with people <laughs> thinking that. It's unfortunate uh, translation that occurs. That is true, but it does not distract from the fact that it is also very strange to make a diet of baby goats. Well, yeah, I um, I don't knock it till you try it, really. It's not, it's not really as... Uh, so it's a bit stringy, um, but if you can stew it just enough, it, it pull, pulls apart, kind of like a, kind of like a fine, a fine dog meat uh, as well. I see, I see, baby goats. I, I, I am very uh, hmm, apprehensive about trying this, but I will give it a shot. I am very interested in trying different cuisines from different cultures. Sure, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to help you prepare it. I, I'm a big fan of the left flank myself, but um, ah, a I good see. rump roast is also nice. And at this point, he's going to think you're, start, you're talking in code, even if he's wrong. <laughs> and he'll just sort of narrow his eyes at you, like, is this Thieves' Camp? 
What does he mean? <laughs> left, left flank and fan of the rump. And he'll just say, ah, yes, but I am a man of the horns. Oh. And he'll just gauge your reaction. <laughs> well, you know, the horns can, you can use them in soups. You can make them very soft and they give a bit of a juice, but you don't eat them directly. That would make you sick. I don't understand how you would eat that. Directly. And he'll still, he's basically, I guess, <laughs> still thinks you're talking in some kind of tone. <laughs> yeah, <good. laughs> yes, the soup. You mustn't get sick from the soup. I've heard it's very dangerous. Yes, it is. It's quite, I mean, it, it, again, it gives it a nice sort of like oily texture to it, but you have to be careful about directly consuming. Sort of like a bay leaf. Like you have to take the bay leaves out. <laughs> yes, we must, we must sit down and talk more about these bay leaves and soups and stews and how dangerous they can be. We should find a right. private area later on in the day. But we can talk in more detail. Well, I'm happy to talk to you in front of other people about it. But we mustn't talk in front of other people about the soups. Well, they won't. <laughs> no, no, they... <laughs> so I'm trying to catch on that he's not catching my what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the soups I'm taking is the soups. They stay between you and me. This is this is dangerous talk. But I am very eager to hear what you mean by these soups. Let us go on, Antigonus. I'm sure we can find a place in my temple where we can discuss this in further, in detail. Yes. Private. Scratching my head, wondering, did I mention Prometheus? I didn't mention Prometheus, did I? <laughs> oh, I I'm trying not to mention Prometheus. So. <laughs> a, a lapse of communication somehow. <laughs> He's just assumed you're speaking in some kind of cant. Thief or not. Maybe orcs cant. Something about yeah. a detailed language using the um, nomenclatures of food to convey dangerous <laughs> messages. Um, but yeah, it's not long, I'm going to say. We, you know, can go on these conversations that you're having between each other until you do reach main, the main sort of upper city of, um, of Athens and you do approach the temple district um, full of not only temples to the larger, the more the Olympians, you know, Apollo, um, you know, Athena, Ares, but also the smaller gods, Trivia, uh, Hypnos, where you went to the other day, and indeed Asclepius. Uh, outside you'll see the very familiar figure of Pruitt Romain, um, who I'm going to hand it over to you, Britt. What are you doing as you're waiting for the party? I'm going to remind you that there is an assistant inside the temple who is currently um, sort of still sweeping, as he was earlier. Uh, yeah, Pruitt didn't even go in. He's actually mm -hmm. leaned up against the wall outside, waiting and looking. I mean, he's not super actively looking. You'll see that he's kind of lost in thought a bit, but he'll glance up when you come over. He is not with uh, Yaling. Indeed. And... Um... You know this because Yarling told you that she was going to look after She's going to go find a room with Cleo. So. And make yeah. it so she doesn't get into any trouble <laughs> and yep. not get herself killed when her mind is away from her body, whatever that means. I'm Everyone saying when I'm not going to kill her. Code. I'm not going <laughs> to kill her character. <laughs> like, okay. Um, sure, yeah. Um, so yeah, the party you also see Pruitt leaning against the um the column there, sort of um hard to see over the heads of the passers by, but as you get closer you will indeed see Pruitt remain. Ah, uh, here's another one of our uh, of our troop here. Uh Herodotes, is this your friend? The one who uh, can help you with the memory problem. Oh oh yes, it is, yes. It's no, no, I have not promised this yet, Herodotus. I will do what I can. Perhaps I am not the one who can help you, but I know somebody who can. Uh, what is your name, good sir? I don't believe we have been introduced. Uh, Previt Romain. I am uh, <laughs> I am from Gaul, if uh, <laughs> you will... Uh, excuse ah. me, sorry. I am lost in thought, but I assume you uh, would remark at my appearance. Yes, I'm a gnome from Gaul. I am part of the Roman army. I am retired. Oh, I see. Pruitt Romain from God. A very interesting person. I, did. I have many questions for you, Pruitt Romain, specifically both about Gaul and about Rome. I have never approached the subject myself, but I have heard that Roman medicine is a wonder. Many different... Yes, it is practical. It, it is put to use much more frequently than uh, other countries, so it has to be better. <laughs> ah, well, that is very interesting. I am a student of medicine myself. Some say the most prime student, the how you say, the teacher's pet of students. Of course, mm. the teacher himself being Asclepius, and he'll point to his temple. <clears throat> well, it is a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm you happy have... to answer any questions you have. Please, join me inside where we can speak more about this illness affecting my friend Herodotus. Although I call him my friend, I have the feeling that perhaps he does not remember me so well. Oh, I'm afraid not. Not to worry, my friend. I, I remember you, and I'm sure in time we will be friends again. 
Oh, uh, Kara Antigonus uh, Herodotus, uh, just to let you know, uh, Yaling went to went with Cleo to uh, find somewhere to stay. Um, but I think it might be with family, so we will have to find our own place to stay. Sure. All right. <laughs> Did you that find anything out, Prewid? <sighs> we found out more questions, but it is not going to be so simple. But yes, um, the box that Larkin carried, it uh, reminds me of a, a parable, a, a tale from days of old. Do you remember the tale of Pandora? I'm uh, not familiar with that one. Have I heard Pandora. that before? Pandora and her box uh, contained the, the ills of the world and the sins and disease. Indeed, this is not just a parable. This is directly connected to, um, and then I look around and notice that <laughs> there's other people around. It's directly connected to you-know-who. Yes, to, oh. the, to the soup. Right. <laughs> right, the soup. Oh, you have mm. soup. Oh, oh, I love a good soup. Indeed, <sighs> we, have, we have much soup inside. Everyone yes. is just going to glance from Herodotus to to, <laughs> <laughs> uh, to Hippocrates and back to Herodotus. Just <laughs> yeah. what is with these old guys in soup? Hippocrates <laughs> sort of winking at Antigonus, like the soup, the soup. <laughs> Antigonus, you make soup for them? Um. Well, I don't have the I don't have any goats, so I don't know how I would make soup for them. But the soup for us is. I, I'm talking about the thing that I can't talk about. I, that's what I'm talking about. We'll talk later. Okay. But let's go see if we can find something for Herodotus to eat. I think. Right. Yes. Hungry. Oh, please come inside. I have much to eat. Please. Oh in, yes. In my stomach is hurting. Not to worry, Herodotus friend. I have much to eat inside. Please come in. And um, he'll walk in and immediately uh, tell his assistant to keep sweeping because it's a mess in here, even though it looks impeccable. But he will lead um, you if. Oh, go ahead if you want to say something. I was gonna just pause by the the guy sweeping up and just sort of um, as they kind of walk by me, uh, not to pry into matters that aren't my own, but you know, who who was that earlier? Who was that woman? Oh, um, that's Agna Dice. She comes here every day, uh, well sometimes twice, to tell me what a useless sod I am, um, accompanied with how. I should be cast into the pits of Tartarus, have my teeth pulled from me by harpies, and indeed be ravaged by wild dogs until the end of my days. She's got quite imagination when it comes to ways that I should suffer, but her heart is in the right place, I, I, I think. You she clearly have spurned her. You, you've declined her love, or...? Oh, no, no, not okay. I. She, she wants to learn from Hippocrates the same way I, uh, I do, but of course... We do not allow women to become physicians. They're welcome to be midwives, but not to become physicians like Hippocrates and someday myself. It is the way that happens has always been. She must learn to accept this, or she'll spend her days wallowing in what could have been rather than what is. She will make a talented midwife, I'm sure, but she seems more interested in becoming a physician. Do you believe that this will be this way forever, that women will never become doctors and like this? Oh, well, of course, if the women were to be doctors, then the gods would have made it so. As it is, the gods have chosen the men to be the doctors, not the women. It seems to me that you have the ability to choose her to be the first, and then suddenly it's no longer a precedent. This just becomes the new thing. I don't uh, really understand why you can't just be the first. I, I, well, I can't be the first. I, I, I sweep the floors here in the hopes that sometimes Hippocrates' vast knowledge will rub off on me. So far, I've learned many things, such as how to sweep floors, how to water plants, and how to, um, I've, well, that's about it, really, but I'm sure one day he will see the potential I have as a student. Agnidice, however, she's very hot-headed, and there is, um, a certain temperament that matches well with being a physician, and Agnidice, she is, um, very impatient with people, especially me. Very cruel. Sure. Right, and, uh, I can't imagine how a man so talented at sweeping floors and having things thrown at him could, you know, see that that woman clearly has no business doing his job. It makes uh, a lot of sense. <laughs> well, you should speak to Hippocrates about it. If there's anybody who could talk about how this happens, it would be him. I'm, I have no say in the matter. 
Hmm. I usually don't meddle in other people's business, but uh, for some reason I feel a little feisty after the last couple days. Anyway, thank you. Uh, yes, well, if if you're looking for Agnadice, just follow the screaming harpy that you hear tomorrow morning. You'll inevitably find her here. Oh, good, good. Consistency, I like that. Indeed. Bye-bye. Roughly when the sun reaches just over that peak over there. That's Morning, she... I know what morning is. Yes, no, no, you. just that actual specific time. She's very precise. <laughs> oh, I see, well... All right. <laughs> I'll chuckle and walk away. <laughs> yeah. uh, rejoining the party at the back of the Temple of Asclepius, which is a comparatively small temple, more of a, um, a shrine that is indoors. Mm, you can't really call it a temple. But it does have a, sh- a back chamber where um, it is sort of the Greek equivalent of a laboratory, not with all the vials you'd expect, because they wouldn't have existed, but um, he still indulges in ideas of um, dissection and um, experimentation and several different tools and implements that you've come to know over your years as the very typical tools of a physician may use. Um, indeed, the floor seems in some places caked with blood that is not yet um, been cleaned, uh, as well as many bloody cloths around as well. And just comes in and says, excuse the mess, please. I have many patients. They come to see me very often. In fact, you have caught me on quite a leisurable day. In fact, there is not many people looking for me today. Perhaps it's because I was at the docks. But yes, please, take a seat, take a seat. I will get some food. Um, I'll walk up and join everybody. And as he walks away, I will I will whisper, I was talking about Prometheus earlier, by the way. Uh, no, I, I understood. I did uh, not understand the yeah. soup. Uh, that was the part that was confusing. Yeah, I don't understand the soup part either, but... um. Pandora uh, was one of Prometheus' first creations, or at least according to the text that I've read. The first woman, the first, uh, well, the gifts of the gods were bestowed upon her and then laid a trap that, again, mankind suffers for, as the gods are wont to do. It is only strange that that it would pass, this box would pass to an Egyptian, Larkin, and then be taken by a Persian, by this man, uh, Yaling did mention that uh, his mask, it seems like it might be from Persia. Mm. Mm. I, I don't know if geography holds the gods back, but perhaps uh, perhaps we'll find a trail soon. Anyway, it seems more deep connected than we may have known. Larkin said she had had the box for a long time, right? She did, yes, since she was a little girl, but it only started to show magic power recently. Hmm. As that your was, chat, sorry, as your chat. Been while she was in Greece, yes. I'd be interested to know if the Persians have a similar myth in their religion. I I do remember the the oracle was was very interested in her. That is true. If a if a pinnacle of Greek religion does not know about this box, maybe we are looking in the wrong place. Many mysteries to unravel. Hmm. So, yeah, not too long before Hippocrates will return as you're um, seated on um, a sort of alcove area, not the area that's got blood on the floors, but rather a cushioned area, which seems to be for the very purpose of um, speaking with people, perhaps for consultations or something, as um, Hippocrates evaluates his patients. Um, and he comes back with simple offerings of cups of wine and indeed some bread and some dried meats, which he places out in sort of a spread pattern. Uh, and he stands above them proudly saying, please help yourself. We have much to discuss. I will sit here and we will talk about you, Herodotus. Now, before we do, I would like you to know you are, you are Druid Romain. Yes. You are Antigonus. <clears throat> yes. And you, my lady, uh, what, is, what is your name? Cara. Cara, from Britannia. Yes, you, you, you know well, this. Caledonia, but close. Caledonia, I, yes. I'm afraid I, I do not know this Caledonia, but it sounds like a wonderful place, perhaps. Sometimes I will study this in more detail, but for the time being, you must forgive my insensitivity regarding your, your origin, your, your place in the world. Oh, that's quite all right. There aren't many people around here who know much about where I'm from. I see. Well, much the pity. I'm sure many would be willing to learn, myself included, but for now, more pressing matters. Herodotus, my friend. 
you'll the last thing you'll remember is a woman. Oh yes, she was very beautiful. I see, I see. Hmm. And without anything else to go on whatsoever, you do not know. I'm afraid not. Well, that that is unfortunate, but thankfully I am here. And Herodotus, I spoke with you much when we were friends, some mm, for a long time, and I understand what you were doing before you disappeared. You were um, you were in heavy research, traveling all over Greece and beyond, and you were very protective over what it was you were studying. But mm, I. I think I have an idea of how to learn what it may have been. Perhaps if we find what you were studying, then perhaps we can understand more about what has taken your memory from you. What about where you were? What What's the last, or the first, I guess, place you remember being? Do I remember that? If, yeah, if you should see you, I mean, I'm not sure hey. where you woke up. Well, in DM, question. Mm -hmm. A Pruitt has studied military um, specifically, and out of game, I happen to know that Herodotus has documented a few battles. <laughs> so would Pruitt okay. know that, or is that not even happened yet? I don't know. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a tricky one, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I mean, he would have documented battles at some point. The question right. is if you would have read his text specifically. So right. I'd say just roll me like a 1d20 and if a 15 sure. plus, then yeah, you did it in the past some History check? Um, yeah, go on. I think that's fair. That's cocked. That's uh, 22. Okay, sure. I'll say you read a few of Herodotus's texts on the arts of war of ancient Greece and Rome and the documentation of the battles and stuff. You read mm -hmm. a good few of them, so maybe you know places he'd been but not places where he went in total. Right, yeah. So I will bring that up, though. Uh, I have read a few texts by Herodotus, I believe. Now I'm actually trying to remember the place that I actually saw this out of character. Uh -huh. I want to say they were just Greek uh, battles. Google. I believe they were in uh, northern Greece. <laughs> battles in northern Greece, yes. Well, I would have expected Herodotus would have made it as far as northern Greece. I know he has documentations as far as very far flung lands. I, it is not surprising to me that he has made it to Britannia either, but the question is where did he lose his memory? But we can pinpoint maybe Britannia given this item that he's been given. I, the question, I just yes. remember a battlefield. A battlefield? I believe, it, I believe it was Troy. Oh, this is from when you woke up. Yes, is that what you mean? Uh, yes. So you lost your memory in Britannia, and you woke up at Troy. I've no idea. That Last is a very. I remember walking was amongst the the rotting bodies. I see. What vivid imagery! Thank you, Herodotus, for that. Um, oh, you're welcome. Well, I know that uh, Herodotus has documented battles from second hand and from a distance. To see a battle up close like Troy, that could cause enough stress to create some problems. Indeed. Maybe so. But it seems we have reached an impasse. With this, the only knowledge that Herodotus can offer, we must seek a more invasive form of understanding. Tell me, are you familiar with the Temple of Hypnos? Uh, yes, we actually visited that mm. earlier today. We have a, a friend staying there, if that well I means what I think it means. Well, they don't usually accept uh, visitors, especially guests. They are a very wily and uh, secretive bunch. Uh, some would say they are quite intimidating. Some would say that they like soup. Hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I love soup. But oh, now you are in private. Perhaps you can share the secret. What do you mean by this soup? Some kind of weapon, I assume. Some kind of magic. Um. Well, I I think it tastes pretty good, but I'm not sure it's magical. I 
it's okay. You, could, you don't have to talk in riddles anymore. We are alone here, I swear. You can share with me what you mean by the soup. Some kind of man that's chasing you? Or oh, a monster? Good riddle. We... What does it mean to say the soup is tasty? Does it mean the monster is hungry? Or the man is dangerous? Or the magic is powerful? What does it mean soup is, is good? I'm, I'm speaking directly about water that's boiled with animals, chunks in it. Some kind of potion. Of you course. Slurp, you slurp it. Uh, I, I can't. I don't know how to be more plain with this man. I, I'm, I'm... That is fine. That is fine. And he'll begin scrolling on some papyrus. <laughs> water boiled with animal parts. <laughs> and sit thinking you're sharing some kind of arcane secret with him for some reason. Um... <laughs> I just dug you into a hole and take it as sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, and take it as not helping himself whatsoever. But he's been uh, in I more don't... cryptic ways than yeah. him. All uh, right. Intelligence of 10, guys. He'll say, the Temple of Hypnos, they have this very esoteric practice that they can conduct on people who wish for the past. They can look into dreams. Now, nothing is to say that Herodotus can remember through the dreams he has today, but uh, think of dreams as more stories that are kept in the vast library of your mind. They can look back to dreams you were having at the time where you were studying whatever it was you were studying, Herodotus. Perhaps while you studied it so fervently, you also began to dream of it. Maybe they can get some kind of clue for you. And do they charge for this service? Is it expensive? Oh, exceptionally expensive, of course, yes. It is a very difficult ritual. It it takes much time, much much resources for the temple to do this, and usually only reserved for the most affluent of visitors to Athens. But I'm sure if you mentioned my name to them, I have helped them in the past, they may be able to cut you some kind of very lucrative deal for Herodotus here. And uh, how precise is this procedure? It may be the most precise thing we can hope for. It may be offering nothing at all. That such is the nature of a dream. Perhaps at the moment that Herodotus was researching this, this thing that he was dreaming instead of sheep in the field, or perhaps he was dreaming of birds in the sky. Maybe, though, he was dreaming about whatever it was that took his memory. You see? Sounds like more oracles, but uh, at mm. least it is an option. Do not, do not diminish the power of the gods. They have the power to... Restore no, 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 Hippocrates. I have the utmost respect for physicians. My life was saved by a Roman physician. Uh, do not get me wrong. I just tire of imprecise solutions. Unfortunately, when there is nothing that we can venture on for the precision, we must resort to the imprecise. Perhaps something there is that we can garner from these visions. Yes. Well, not to be. Um... Not to be too forward here, but if it is expensive and we use your name, I wonder if you would make a kind donation to your friend Herodotus there. Perhaps you could help us jumpstart it and we could pay you back later. You're asking me for money. Indeed. You me. That is, that is the currency, yes. Only for Herodotus, if you can spare it. No, oh, well, we have some gold, don't we? We do. Uh, how, expensive how expensive is this it? procedure? Yes. I do not know. You would have to ask the clerics of Hypnos. We can we can ask after we've had our soup. Ah, Indeed. yes. After I, we've had our soup. Yes, we will have the soup soon, but we must be careful that it is not too hot. Ah, yes. you're catching oh, on. Oh, Very is, well. is it, is it yeah. cooking? Yes, it is cooking in the oven. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> but I do well, not want to... I do not... Yes. Herodotus, could I look at that knot a little bit closer? Oh, of course, my dear. I'll hand over. I want to take it and examine it more closely and see if there's anything about it that I recognize or that's familiar. Bunch okay. of arm off. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a mimic. It's uh, a typical Celtic knot of some description. Um, it's got interwoven sort of lace, and in that is sort of twigs that are being used to strips to make sort of a fine twine that keeps it all together with leaves poking out of certain areas. It's quite well crafted, and you'd know that some effort and some love went into this. But the crafting that is used with these is not from Caledonia. It's more from, like, um, the southern part of Britannia. It's 
very beautifully made. Whoever did this put in a lot of time and effort. It's not not like ones that my people make, though. So not, I'm afraid I can't be of much help here. Oh, thank you. Well, I don't even know if it was a gift. I could have stolen it. Hmm, or no, I don't think you would have stolen anything. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think so. You stole in our hearts. Why not this knot? <laughs> no, no, no one. Okay. What? Yeah, Pru- Pruitt is gonna give. But Pruitt is gonna give Antigonus just a really confused look. <laughs> I'm a yeah. big softy. What do you want me to say? Usually you say something about death, but I suppose it's a nice change. So won't complain. Why don't death you go see where the soup is, Antigonus? <laughs> Yes, I'll go see where the fucking soup is. <laughs> yes, and when you find this soup, make sure to don't make sure not to touch it with your fingers. Yes. Oh, oh, he'll have a bow. No, no. Mm. Please, whatever you do, don't mention fingers and soup at the same time. Of course. Mm-hmm. How foolish of me. Yes. I should, obviously, I am not versed very well in these ways of the soup of which you speak, but I am most interested in discovering its secrets. Well, you have much to learn, but be careful. I did. I shall. <laughs> Thank you for your caution. In the meantime. Antigonus, Antigonus, Herodotus really wants soup, you know. I I understand. Yes, I I will. I, um, I'll be back. <laughs> uh, well, so, let us go to the Temple of Hypnos, and if there is soup along the way, we can purchase some. An excellent idea. Yes. What right. time is it? Is it early enough? I mean, we have to go there to sleep anyway. So. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's like. Uh, afternoon like six o'clock on the old sundial so yeah i'd say like it's getting a bit late sun starting to weigh heavy in the sky pleasant warm sort of very heavy um sounds of chirping cicadas is it pronounced cicada or cricket i don't know like you know what i mean so the bug that's sort of uh filling the atmosphere and um Many people making their way to the Agora to indulge in either relaxation or a cup of wine with a friend. You'll see many people sort of, for lack of a better word, lazing about at the end of the day. I uh, want to try and overhear what the gossip is, if there's anything about what happened in the Agora on the way. Interesting. Very interesting, Pruitt Romain. Roll me a perception check. Did the big ears do anything? <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. Roll me <laughs> a perception check. <laughs> so, yeah. no. <laughs> so no. Uh, what's my bonus? I'm going to say that's the biggest value is displaced by the fact that you are two and a half feet to three feet tall. So, you know, you're further away than everyone else from the mouths of the Greeks. Uh, what did you say, sorry? A 10? Uh, 10, yeah. Ten, yeah. I'm specifically listening to the ones that are wrestling that are kind of low to the ground. So, you know. Oh, right. The ones that are wrestling. <laughs> I forgot there was a bunch of wrestlers there. Cut yeah, out but... that disadvantage. You know? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll say that you find some people um, propping themselves up by their elbows, but otherwise sitting sort of lay down in sort of a very yeah, okay. like, hedonistic sort happened. of way. Yeah. <laughs> grapes fed to them by Eating their some, slaves. Yeah, grapes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> sort of musing about the day's events at the picnic yeah. and the thing and so, yeah but yeah it's a flat ten so what is <laughs> um you'll hear words sort of heroes Eritrea um and you'll hear um uh yeah that, that's about it I'd say probably okay, yeah, yeah. The 10. but they're talking about it so that's yeah it's on their lips indeed. Sure. And indeed as you pass along continuously listening it seems to be on a lot of people's lips this whole Eritrea business that apparently happened um I will say, indeed, as you go along, you probably catch one time somebody saying the word gnome. No. Okay. Gnome. Gnome. Okay. Yeah. Not just no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what could it mean? <laughs> well, I was thinking, well, I was starting to try and piece that together, but yeah. You catch the makes... word and, but you're not okay, sure what it means. They, they, if sure if they're it... saying the word gnome, do I get any glances? Like, is anybody looking at me? Um, or do I just not know? <laughs> yeah, with a 10, it's hard to tell. Yeah, yeah. no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> John. But um, um, I have one one little, I know we're about to move forward, but one little thing I want to say to um, Hippocrates before we leave. Uh, just to rewind just a second. I just want to say, um, yeah, by sure. the way, that, um, that poison water that you're investigating there, I, I know this is a long shot, but considering what we've seen the past few days, potentially check it for some sort of 
infection of the dead, dead bodies in water. I know that can cause disease, perhaps even necrosis, uh, from what I understand. You're I'm not well this, but it's something that we've we've run into lately. Interesting. Indeed, if it was a decaying body that it is ripe for disease, maybe that could be the cause. But I will look into it, yes. There is much I can study from this sample, so thank you Good. for your advice. Tell Let's... me, do tell me. Revisit me when you are done with the Temple of Hypnos. If they do not agree to help you, then perhaps I can mm, think of something else. Sure. I appreciate your help so far. Uh, hope safe. you have a good... Uh... Good taste of soup later. And I'll it just is. immediately walk away before he says anything. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. But, but as you're walking away, he'll, you'll just hear the final words from him saying, yes, and I will eat it with a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> and, he'll, and he'll sort of shift the eyes, look around to make sure no one heard, and then back slowly into his temple. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Yeah. Currently, the <laughs> town is sort of both in the midst of pleasant relaxation, but also daily worship as you pass several shrines and temples with people filing in, perhaps with fruits and um, bread and other things that will make good offerings, um, but others just simply going there with what meager things they have to worship. What is primarily, obviously, the Temple of Zeus and other temples to the Olympians, but there are other smaller temples that see some people with more particular needs that go to. But yeah, amongst these, it's not hard to find, tucked away down right at the back of the sort of the temple district with its rear wall up against the walls of Athens is um, sort of, this is um, next to the that, that wall on the outside of it is sort of dwarfed by a large hill. And it seems like the temple goes into the wall and perhaps even the hill itself. Um, but it is still the same swirling darkness inside the Temple of Hypnos. It's very difficult to see in here. Even for those of you of dark vision, as you pass through the threshold, it seems to just overtake you, and you have basically the sensation of dim light around. You can barely see the shapes of things, but not unable to determine the exact color of them. Um, but being that it's getting towards night, there will be clerics of Hypnos there, two of them to be precise, sort of talking with one another over a very bare table, which seems to be where the altar should be, but it's so barren and so lacking in its decoration of the other temples that it makes a question whether it's an altar altogether. And they immediately look up as you enter. Antigonus, you were very persuasive here last time. Uh, why didn't you take the lead on this? Um, sure, yes. Uh, DM, does the Temple of Athena have any opinions about the, um, like what I would have grown up hearing anything about what they thought of Hypnos uh, clerics and things? Yeah, roll me a religion check. Not great. Five plus uh, five plus three eight. I'll tell you what. You guys better start rolling well, or I'm not gonna be able to tell you anything, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. I heard the word gnome. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> so with an eight, you know that hypnosis is the god of sleep, dreams. That's about it. Okay. His the clerics that worship him are so few in number that they haven't really garnered a reputation yet. I see. Okay. Uh, pardon me. Um, we're back. We I was here earlier today. Uh, left a friend's body to be watched over. Do you remember me? <laughs> yes, I remember you. Right. You, you left a friend here. Now, tell us, do you wish to pay us for her stay? or? He already I... paid you. I left an offering of two yes. gold on the way out. If, if you need more than that for another day, we can discuss it. Um, we do have another matter, though. We were told by Hippocrates at the temple of uh, Asclepius. I can't <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You guys are going to the wrath of the gods. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> why, why make an enemy of the god of medicine? Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Disadvantage on all medicine yeah. checks to stabilize yeah. each other. Yeah. <laughs> the temple of Asclepius, Hippocrates. Uh, we have a friend here, and I, I motion over to Herodotus, whose memory seems to be a bit um, fuzzy for the past few years. We were wondering if we could do some sort of dream thing that might reveal, you know, what happened to him. Uh, hmm. Yes, I know what Hippocrates speaks of, and it is very complex. Very easy to say we can do it, but conducting the ritual is a whole nother matter. 
Tell me, how do you wish to pay tribute to the mighty Hypnos for such an act? Oh, um, well, we, we do have some gold. Uh, Hippocrates was saying that this is a matter of state business. Uh, the man that we wish to help is Herodotus, the, the historian. Herodotus. And yet he has no gold to give himself. I would have thought Herodotus to be a very wealthy man. Oh, I didn't say I didn't have any gold. And what do you have, mighty, wise Herodotus, that you can give to us so that we can look into your past? Oh, I, I don't know how much it costs. Hmm. How, much, how much do you need? We need payment, but not in drachmi. We have enough drachmi. Perhaps you'd be willing to help us with something. Something the guards of Athens cannot. Oh, what could that be? <laughs> mm. They'll put their heads together in these sort of extremely like black cloaks, like as though the cloaks themselves, when they turn their backs, it's almost as like they're silhouetted. That they're just sort of a vanta black, you know, absorbing light, it seems. As they put their heads together and you can hear them whispering, but you can't tell the words. Um, um at this point Pruitt is gonna just kinda nudge Antigonus and just kinda whisper to him, I, I know it's not very nice to stay on the streets of the Agora, but I'm questioning the decision to stay here now. <laughs> for yeah, the night. Um, you know, they they I tend to like kind of weird stuff, but they 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 even creep me out a little bit. I'll, I'll admit that. You think they know about the soup, Pruitt? Can we <laughs> drop that bit? That's <laughs> really... <laughs> that bit is getting thin, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the bit anymore. <laughs> just confuses Herodotus anyway. It's true. <laughs> yes, you're promising soup, which just isn't there, man. But okay, um, <clears throat> sure. Uh, if their offer is too strange, let our counter-offer be the fame of Herodotus cured. Sure, that's a good idea. I don't know why I'm the one talking, but uh, I'll keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sort of wait for them to give an answer. Yeah, we're... <laughs> both of the groups unhuddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's break. Our, where's our good-looking, charming one when we need her? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very well. Well, the two um, the two clerics of Hypnos sort of turn their backs and you see those same white pale faces and piercing white eyes, almost as though they've got sort of a, um, a mistiness about them, but they're sort of reflected in a moonlight which just isn't there in the temple. As they search you up and down and one looks to the other and the other just gives a nod and says, If we were to ask you to do something for us, which needed to remain a secret to the Athenians, would you perhaps indulge us? Or would you be more inclined to take this idea to the Athenians and betray us? We are not exactly the most popular people in Athens. Uh, they don't tend to listen to us when we give our words, so as long as you're not asking us to do something that would harm life, I, I think that we may come to an understanding. Very well. I can see that you, my friend, may have had some trouble with the Athenians in the past, purely from the hue of your skin. Indeed, I carry my burden on the surface, as they say. Hmm. Very well. Follow us. We can talk more about this below. That's and creepy. <laughs> <laughs> he'll go to the bike looking around this room, it's as though there aren't any walls, but it becomes more like you're just standing in a void, and the only place you can see with any illumination is the sort of door, the light of dusk that it breaches through the entryway to the temple. But sure enough, they approach where a wall should be and just pass straight through, and it's only upon closer inspection that you do realize that there is a sort of vacancy, an inlet there, that is some corridor which begins to angle down in a spiral. Creepy. Yes, Don't um, be afraid. There's nothing to fear in the dark. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, my I'll cast light out. on my staff. <laughs> <laughs> and I will Come cast on, guys. I'll cast light on my shield. <laughs> oh wow, okay. As you cast light, it does nothing. 
you get a sense of it sort of bulging out like a like a balloon inflating this light, although it's contained. But you suddenly see the darkness sort of struggling and the other both light and dark sort of vibrating against other until the light just begins to fade and begins to get squeezed into a tiny, tiny, like almost a star in a massive sky of complete black until that itself also just pops in a tiny bit of dust. And one of the clerics looks over his shoulder and says, please, that would hurt our eyes. We like to keep it dark down here. Well, um, I guess that uh, if there's no objections and Herodotus really, really wants his memories. <laughs> I'm going to stick to the walls. <laughs> so Pruitt, not wanting to get surrounded <laughs> in the dark, is going mm. to stick to one of the walls, <laughs> but still follow. I'll be placing my hand on someone's <laughs> shoulders. Sure. Um, they sort of will walk down these steps with an aptitude which does not match the the level of light in here. Their footsteps never lose balance as they just walk this path downwards and downwards, the spiraling stair until the walls of the temples that are usually these clean-cut stones finally give way into what seems to be cave, rocky edges to the uh, sides where your eyes finally begin to adjust to the darkness and you're getting a just a basic idea of what the shape of this place is. And it's not long before these, this cave, this uh, spiraling down cave, returns into stonework again at the very bottom and there is a large room there and sure enough and one of the very cold stone slabs in this room with others you'll see the body wrapped up of larkin and um he'll point over to it uh well one of the clerics will point over to it and say to you antigonus there's your friend she's been a very hmm. Easy person to take care of during her stay. Doesn't let's cause too much trouble. Way. Yeah, let's <laughs> hope it stays that way. Indeed, indeed. The others, they can get a bit restless. But your friend is quiet. And we like the quiet down here. And you'll just look around and you see several other wrapped bodies around. Uh, the other the other bodies can get restless, you're saying? Oh, yes. Very restless indeed. Do you think that when a body dies, its dreams die with it? Sometimes they linger. Sometimes they escape. Pruitt is going to investigate Larkin's body for tampering. Oh, right. Interesting. Okay. Um, medicine? Medicine? Investigation. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. About Natural 20. <laughs> just pissed off the medicine god and then... <laughs> oh, what's going on? Yeah. You're so... Um, right. Natural 20. Go ahead, Kara. What, what? I was just going to say, while all that's going on, Kara would have also approached Larkin's body and just made her some fresh flowers to leave. Sure around. thing. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, um, with these fresh flowers sort of creating a new sort of uh, floral scent in the room that otherwise has a very musty and sort of dank smell about it. Uh, Pruitt, you'll notice that um, with a 20 natural investigation that there should have been some... Um, it seems like, actually, they've taken care of her. They've actually, like cleaned her face and, you know, uh, wrapped her up, made sure she's kept up tight in her bindings and stuff. Um, mm. But you can't see any sort of invasive tampering. It seems right. to be like quite good natured tampering, but it is tampering nonetheless. Right. Uh, Pro will look up at the group and just give them a reassuring nod. Just everything's okay sort of thing. <laughs> Antigonus is looking at the other dead bodies being like, how is everything okay? <laughs> but, uh, in like... relation to that body specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so he'll notice that Antigonus is looking over the other bodies, and so from behind Larkin's body, Pruitt will just give a... You know, <laughs> uh, maybe I could put on some more, uh, more appropriate music for such a situation. <laughs> oh, no. Mm. As long as it's not battle music, because that... Uh, no, no, music. not battle music. Right. If any music? There we go, that's cool. That's all deep and stuck. Um, yeah, so they'll... Um, not pause in this room, not link for too long uh, in this room of corpses or what you assume to be corpses uh, all wrapped up on these stone slabs some of them unoccupied but the room has got a deathly chill about it, one that's usually only associated with death itself um, Is there another exit other than what we came in? Is there a does it make, keep going? Or? Yeah, well they, um, I'm going to make a perception check because they do keep going and they do indeed go through another exit uh, 22 Okay, I said I wouldn't make you make one but Oh, I said, I, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm very 
very you keen to find it. <laughs> you see the two clerics pass through some sort of rectangle in the wall, and you come to the conclusion that there must be some kind of door there or something. And indeed, indeed. yeah, they yeah. do pass by. Sorry, being churlish <laughs> with you. Dark. It's very <laughs> dark. Yeah, you're right. No, it's, it's, yeah, it I'm, not, I'm not being flippant. Uh, you are, uh, you do the, um, yeah, they do pass through a clean cut square door, a rectangular sort of recess in the stonework where they, it just seems to get darker and darker, but it fortunately no longer goes down. Okay. And, um, we come this far, what would you have us do? Oh, you're speaking to them, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. okay, that's fine, yeah. Um, as they, are you following them through this door? Because if you don't, mm -hmm. you'll just see a bony white hand appear from the darkness and do sort of a luring uh, gesture to you. I, um, I really wish they were more direct, and I'll keep moving forward. <laughs> yeah, I'll follow. Uh, it will not take long before they get to the end of a corridor and here instead of another room you'll just see it comes to an abrupt end a complete stop of stonework and then suddenly one reaches up to a lever on the side of the, the, uh, the walls and pulls it and with a heavy crumbling and dust shaking from the sides of the walls the wall itself at the very end of the corridor just begins to sink and there is light let through which which point they turn their backs as light begins to pour in this dark tunnel and they look, they, the two of them standing next to each other, both of an eerily similar height and face and gaze. Just look across the party and they point outside the door. And one of them says, Welcome to the mountain. What race are they? Make a nature check. Also, were there any mountains near the temple? <laughs> there seemed to be like a large hill behind. Oh, there was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, 16, did you say? 16 total, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, there's something, but that is not enough because it's very difficult what they are, unfortunately. They, they, you know there's some kind of elf, it seems. Right. They're, they're, they're gait and they're sort of very slender bodies as they move and the way they carry themselves, the way they talk, the ang sort of angles of their face match an elf, mm -hmm. but at the same time, their pale skin, sort of deathly white skin. And their misty eyes don't match any recollection of elf you've ever encountered before. Okay. Yeah. They'll point out and they'll say, before you continue, what we desire is something stolen from us. Something stolen from us and taken into the mountain. And he'll point to two pedestals outside the door where there is sort of a several steps and sort of widening to narrowing passage up to where you're standing now steps that go down and into the cave which peculiarly does have um torches and sconces into the cave wall which light it up um and even though it's a very dim light, the light from the torches, it's much welcome to you having spent some 10 minutes walking here in almost the pitch black um, at least now you can see the warming orange glow of fire in the ca in the in the mountain itself. It seems to be a huge cavern that they're pointing out to. And sure enough, every now and then you'll see somebody walking through the cavern tunnels as though it's a road. They're not stopping, but they do look at you. But they look at you with all the same interest that somebody passing on the street would, as though it's very normal to see people down here. And um, they just look like average Athenian citizens, many of them. But some of them are more hunched over. Some of them are more ragged. Some of them are wearing rags. Indeed, some of them wearing nothing at all as they pass by. Indeed, their very pale skin seems to strike you as odd. But it's more towards these crumbling dioceses which seem to have had some sort of statue stolen from them. That's what these two clerics are referring to as they say, Thieves, fools, bring these statues back to us. They defend us from the inhabitants of the mountains. They are blessed by Hypnos. The statues are of two dogs with four heads. Four heads Re each or religion two check? Heads make four. <laughs> Thank you for dragging that. Sort of, like, this, <laughs> you mean like four heads each or like two between four or three on one and a normal dog? <laughs> <laughs> two heads each. Oh, we lost. Uh -oh. Sorry. Yeah, we'll have to reset. Sorry. 
So we have to quickly do cameras. So yeah, let's take a quick uh, one minute break where we don't have to go off, of course, but just reset the cameras and stuff. But I can actually continue describing this, uh, this cavern and stuff. Okay. Indeed, yeah, you'll see a well trodden path for going through the cavern. Carl, camera. Yep. And, and In fact, maybe, let me, and maybe I should narrate over this, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everyone's enjoying the stream. Pantheon, <laughs> welcome. It's me, Harry, the greatest DM this side of Northern England, specifically the Blackpool <laughs> part. So not a huge area, but probably the best DM in that area. <laughs> right, Carl. Okay, then it's the dead camera, right? Yep, dead camera. Yep. And then Antigonus afterwards. We're cool, we're cool, we're cool. There you go. Sorry, guys. That's all right. No worry, Kara. You do you. But don't turn your camera up. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, really kidding. Right, so yeah, this this um this cavern. Um I want to side... do a religion check on the statue, sorry that Oh yeah, sure. Me. No, go ahead. Make that religion check. Eleven. Eleven, yeah. Um it's hard to tell to what these um these creatures may be. Um this cavern though, it's um not immense, but very large and wide. And in the very sort of way inlet way, you'll see where many years of footsteps have worn a sort of path that goes through the caves. And as you look, these torches sort of light up entrances into other buildings that have been carved into the cave set, almost mined out rather than built themselves. Now, although there is a caricature of these sort of building blocks, but upon closer inspection, you can see they're actually just lines that have been carved into the walls to give them the appearance of building blocks. But indeed, there seems to be several buildings down here. People go into them every, every few minutes as uh, the clerics explain the situation to you in the background you'll see people come and go not in the same volume you would have in athens but uh here people seem to be quite in abundance maybe you know uh you know uh, is gonna there. reach out his hand and see if it passes through one of these people all right sure yeah um as you reach out your hand you touch somebody and they look down at you and they just say keep your hands to yourself Foolish child. And what uh, brings you here? Ah, what indeed? What business is mine of yours that you touch me so? Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm new to this place and I do not know the standards. They are very strange, so forgive me if I am intrusive. And he'll spit at your feet, <laughs> kick up some dust and say, keep your hands to yourself or lose them. Cost okay, I'm going to try splashing him with a bu bucket of pure water next. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah, no. I, like, uh, I honestly thought these guys were ghosts. So I just wanted to make sure. Hey, like, assumption. how many people worship him? No, so, like, a fair yeah. assumption, indeed. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, you do manage to make contact with them. Um, good, okay. But the clerics... Uh, but sorry, I think I'm taking issue. You want to say something? Yeah, and I'm just curious. In my time, sort of on the run in Athens, mm -hmm. did I happen to find this sort of underground mountain society at all? Would I? I'm gonna what say there may be a good chance you did. Roll, just roll me a history check. <laughs> oh no, don't roll up. Um, yeah, pretty good. Uh, fifteen plus through plus one sixteen. Uh, yeah, um, the mountain outside Athens uh, is a place that is both welcome and disparaged by normal Athenians. On one hand, the temples of the le least worship gods are here, and they shouldn't have a right to exist in Athens. But on the other hand, at least they're kept out of sight of normal Athenians. Hypnosis temple being different in that it's allowed to be worshipped in Athens and in the mountain. So here you will find the temples to gods such as Hades, Hecate, Thanatos, Tartarus, the gods that no Athenian of a noble mind would ever be seen dead worshipping. Yeah. Good. Hang on. Okay. Would an Athenian be seen dead worshipping Hades? That's a philosophical <laughs> question, right? I guess so. Right? <laughs> um, yeah. um, basically, a place where the less desirable gods and the less desirable people of Athens make their home. Yeah. And I would not have found any Promethean worshippers, but I probably looked around and like, okay, there's some interesting stuff here, but not what I was looking for. Cool. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, okay. kind of like that. Um, 
So the um, two temple clerics, um, one will speak and then the other will interrupt and say, before you go, keep your wits about you down here. Not many people like visitors that don't worship as they do. These two statues, safe to say that they protected us from any miscreants that would attack or steal from the Temple of Hypnos. Many people seek the corpses down here to do nefarious acts. I want you to find these two statues and bring them back to us. I know for a fact who stole them, the only ones who would have the audacity to challenge the Temple of Hypnos. Uh, cleric, you said that these statues have the power to raise the dead. Not the dead. The statues, first, let's just be, keep it simple and say that they have a life of their own. It is only important that we understand why they were stolen and what their power is so that we can recover them. The statues upon saying a certain word would spring to life and attack anybody that me and my friend here would seek them upon. Very valuable asset with them, with the horrible people that approach our temple down here. Not all are welcome. And would the people who stole these statues know this command word to awaken them? I do not know. Perhaps. Perhaps they had heard us say it in the past. Perhaps they do not know. Mm. Would you teach it to us, and then we could use it against them? Hmm. I will not. <laughs> uh, what about if there's a word to de deactivate them? There is no word to deactivate them. Oh, that's convenient. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and if there, if there was... Also something I would never share with you. Oh, no, no. Okay. Uh, he pulls his, puts his hand in his pocket, pulls out a bit of cured leather. Okay. Whispers some words and then casts some mage armor on himself. All right, sure. Uh, go ahead and increase your AC accordingly. Go ahead, Kara. I think you want to say something. Yeah, you said you know who stole them. Can you tell us more about who stole them and the circumstances under which they were stolen? Yes. We have many who try to come through the Temple of Hypnos to take the bodies that we keep in storage down here. One of the most common intruders is, is what is known as the followers of Tantalus. They are a cruel, despicable people who indulge in practices which make even our skin crawl. I would and think that takes a lot. <laughs> indeed it does. Cannibals. Sacrifice. Of the worst sort. I mean, if nobody else is, I would like to try and know who Tantalus is. <laughs> so. I'm getting an inkling you may already know who Tantalus is. <laughs> I will let you roll oh, yeah. a religion check to see if you oh. know anything about Tantalus. Religion, that's a 13. Um, you know he's being punished in Hades. You know, his punishment is very specific in that um, the great vines hang above him and he's in a pool of wine. And every time he tries to dip his head to suck from the wine, oh, the pool shrinks. Yeah. And every time he tries to right. bite from the grapes, the vines raise. And he's cursed That's like right. this for all eternity. That is Tantalus. But you're not sure why he was punished. And you're not sure what he did in life. Is that, yeah, well, is that I actually don't remember, so that works out. Yeah, <laughs> so, right, very well. Is that the guy that's in Percy Jackson? I've not seen everything's it. a Percy Jackson, pretty much. I've so. not seen Percy Jackson. <laughs> the guy, he, he, pull, he pours out wine and it turns to water. He's been uh, that... punished by Zeus. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, he, he does a fictional version, a fictionalized yeah, version yeah, where yeah, yeah. Tantalus oh. has to be the camp, camp director, and every time they serve him food and he goes to eat it, it disappears or turns to dust or something. Okay, oh, right. Well. <laughs> Let's, anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's get back on. Track. I don't remember why I was anyway. punished, though. So. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. That's fair enough. Okay. So, yeah, you'd know that they, um, that's who Tantalus was and followers of his perhaps, you know, do worship him for something he did in life. How would Tantalus come to this plane and steal something here when he is down in Hades? 
and then the two clerics will look and one of them will just sort of let, let out the sort of most skeletal laugh you've ever heard. Just the clacking of a jaw against teeth, like, ha, ah, ah, ah. Not here, no. His followers. In the same way that we are followers of Hypnos, they follow Tantalus. Hmm. That makes more sense. Well, they... I do want to get this task done. Um, a question, do you know the path there? Do you know the way to go? The, some sort of map or directions? Follow the road through the mountain to the deepest areas where people are less accommodating than they are here. Can you say that again? Keepest areas? What is it? Deepest. The deepest areas. Deep, oh, deepest. I <laughs> yeah. like, Would hey. you like me to spell it for you? <laughs> uh, it them. means like low down, Zach. Like <laughs> Thank you, yeah. in the yeah. earth, you know? <laughs> That's uh, um, two floors down, right? <laughs> on the 13th room? <laughs> yeah. They are on um, basement level two. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you need a service key for that? <laughs> yeah. uh, but the last thing that I'll say is uh, Antigonus will um, take his finger and pluck it on his mace to make his thumb bleed a bit, and he'll sort of reach his hand out and say, accomplishing this task. You help us restore Herodotus' memory, or at least give him a dream cycle, or whatever it is you do. Extend we will it. look into his dreams, but maybe the answers will not be there. And he'll reach out his long, sort of sagging cloak, and um, from it protrudes just a, a, again a very white hand, which takes yours. And it grips tight, but you see it, and it's like skin on bone with no blood or flesh beneath it. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll count that as a as a promise then. That's right. Wipe, wipe my hand very <laughs> <laughs> clearly on my on my robe. We will close the door behind you. Once you have There is no pro- need for that. You do not have to close the door behind us. We are currently without any protection without our dogs. We do not want to keep the way open should anyone try and breach the temple. Uh, that is unfortunate because it is very difficult to do what you ask with the door closed. We will know when the dogs are returned, and then we will reopen the way. And what guarantee do we have that these dogs will not attack us? Now, well, for what reason would we have to attack you? You pay for your friend's residence in the temple. <sighs> we do not know you. And this is not very reassuring. And if we have no way of escape, it would be very idiotic to assist you. All right, roll that persuasion, Jack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a six. Mm. The door <laughs> will close. But rest assured, if we wanted to kill you, we would have not gone through all this trouble of explaining our task. Then I have one more suggestion. One of you will go through the door with us, and the other will remain on the other side. You can remain as close to the door as you wish, but one will remain on our side, so that we guarantee our escape. Mm. One will look to the other and say, and if this one on the other side of the door is attacked... Then he can escape. The door takes many seconds to open. They will have plenty of warning. We are very good at yelling. And we will be far ahead. Mm. Very well. He will go. And the other one will look back at him and say, No, <laughs> you will go. <laughs> and then the other one will say, You, you had me clean the corpses yesterday. It is your turn to do something. And the other one will just sort of say, No, very well. But you must yell loud. And if there is danger, well... Perhaps I will stand a chance of living through it. <laughs> we'll try our best to keep it contained to our side. Uh, that's in everyone's mutual benefit, yes? Mm-hmm. And he'll um, step to the side through the door with you into the light, at which he's already visibly uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Follow yeah. the temp. Feel free to ask the residents and the passers-by where it is. They know, ask them for the place to stay away from, and they may know what you mean. Or we could ask you, since you're coming with us to the door. <laughs> I'm going to the door, but I'm not going with you to the followers of Tantalus. 
Mm. I, I, I think it is more I, complicated then. Yes, I think we'll we'll be all right <clears> from here. Let's uh let's get this over with then. I would like to get back to Yaling before before we uh go to bed. Sure thing. Um, indeed, one of the step through the door with you, and the other one start, like pulls the lever from behind as the door just begins to envelop in darkness, and sure enough, it raises from the ground and um, comes to a close with a very significant sort of solidity about it. Onward, then. Hmm? What, one last, I mean, I'm, uh, it's probably not going to help any anything, but I just don't want to do one last insight on this guy that's on our side of the door, intentions are honest or not. Yeah, sure. You can um, incite him um, sure. yeah. to sort of get a clue of all the past conversations you've had over the past 10 minutes and see. So, dirty 20. Yeah, um, seems to be quite earnest. And um, yeah, you feel cool. like he's, um, although he speaks in a very strange and peculiar pattern, that he doesn't seem to be hiding much from you. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do a quest for Mr. Creepy. <laughs> I'm staying here. And he'll just put his back to a pillar and then slump down to the ground and hug his knees to his chest and pull his head heavily over his face and sort of assume the posture of a rock. <laughs> As he stays perfectly still, but it is a black cloak, so he may be a bit visible, but that's where he's staying. Okay, so just get to get the layout straight, we just came out of the, the underground temple of Hypnos, and now mm. we're in a in-between area between all these other uh, not-so-good temples or whatever they are. Yeah, sure. Not is that how that works? I'm a little confused. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. It's uh, several okay. caverns that <laughs> sprawl within the mountain, a cave system, in which have, built sev have been built several temples, hidden from Athenian eye. Mm-hmm. And also, you'll see dwellings here as well, smaller doors in the sides of built in the sides of the caves and things. Uh, what is the general direction? Are you asking him? Yeah, <laughs> and he'll just um, from his position as a rock. He won't answer, <laughs> but you'll see like a, an arm extend and just point down to the eastern path, heading deeper into the mountain. Yeah. The once we're move. once we're a little bit of distant from him, I'll turn back to the party and just say. Oh, curses. I was going to buy a shield. It's been useful. <laughs> what a nice gentleman. <laughs> that is not the word I would use to describe him, no. But, uh... <laughs> uh I've never done such strange things, but, uh... Duty calls, I suppose. <laughs> he looked like a dead elf. He did, didn't he? That is accurate, yes. His handshake was like a dead elf, too. Oh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay. To assuage your fears, Pruitt, I have been down here before. Most of the people are uh, simply looking for a place to worship and to be that the mainland Athens does not allow them to do. So mm. they can be unpleasant sorts because the world has treated them that way, but they are not inherently bad people, I don't believe. Antigonus, have they too tasted the... Through it. <laughs> Enough uh, with the fucking uh, soup. <laughs> that I will just keep marching forward. So, yeah, up until the road splits, I guess we just kind of keep pushing forward until we have yeah. to make a decision about. Uh, we're making our way. Yeah. yeah. Going left or right or something. Sure thing. <laughs> um, so as you're, uh, you know, na navigating these sort of both narrow and sometimes widening paths of the interior caverns of this mountain. Uh, again, yeah, you'll see several statues of less worshipped gods, gods that don't promote sort of um, open worship in, in Athens. But at the same time, you see quite well-to-do Athenians down here amongst the rabble, the, um, the people who look like they've been down here for some time, the skin, the shade of colour, which only comes with a lack of natural light. And they sort of just, um, many of them hide from you as you move by, but they don't seem to be of any malicious uh, intent they just seem to get scurrying away from you um as you pass but most people just ignore you as you walk past them they walk past you and you make your way deeper and deeper until people start to thin out and there's not many people on the path that's going through the cavern anymore um but yeah what would you guys like to do as you're making your way through um pro will just make one comment uh during on the way just say uh this reminds me of carthage 
they have a habit of worshipping ancestors more than gods, and they have very deep, very intricate uh, grave sites, and they tend to hide powerful relics in them. I once had to uh, <laughs> scavenge one of these sites, and it was somewhat like this. Mm, I certainly wouldn't mind finding a powerful relic. That'd be a nice bonus to the uh, this particular quest. <laughs> It seems like there are fewer and fewer people. Do you think we should try to stop someone and ask them about this Tantalus? Before Probably a good idea. Talk? Yes, um, I've done a lot of talking. I, I feel like someone else should take the helm. I'm not very persuasive. You there! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, uh, who do you, uh, you flag down somebody. I, I assume the next mm, well-to-do person you see, or... Yeah. Is that right? Well, yeah. No, I don't, I don't care what they look like. I'm flagging down the next person. All right, sure. Uh, we'll say it's a, a young man um, yeah. with a cleanly shaven face just sort of um, stops in his path and almost drops some scrolls on the floor. He scoops them up and says, oh, yes, hi, hello. <laughs> how hello. are you? How, 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 how are you? Well, you are certainly the brightest thing in here. How are you? Uh, my name is Pruitt. <laughs> uh, what is your name? <laughs> it's um, it's Cardius. Cardius. And uh, which temple are you going to, Cardius? I, I'm going to visit the Temple of Hecate. Oh, yes. Uh, magic, isn't it? Uh, Indeed, yes. Like... Uh, magic. Uh, old magic. She's very it's dangerous. It's a very magic. interesting study, uh, certainly. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yes. I'm hoping we... the clerics will tell me how to um, kill my brother-in-law. He's quite a menace, you see. Magically, I mean. Uh, what, what is your name again? One more time. Cardius. 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 Uh, Cardius... Um... The, uh, uh, searching for power and more capability is a good thing, but killing your brother will not solve your problems. It will not make you happier. Oh, no, I assure you it will. I will be much joyous when I see him boiling alive. Hmm. I do not think you will, not long term. Maybe in the moment, yes, but uh, the consequences after that, you will not like your life. Uh -huh. Um. I, see. I did stop you for another reason. Uh, we are looking for, well, we have a bit of a problem with uh, the worshippers of Tantalus. We just need to talk to one of them. And uh, we were told there was a place to avoid, but we just need to talk to one of the worshippers. So if you would kindly point out the direction, or at least the, the place where no one is supposed to go. So. Oh, <laughs> the place that no one's supposed to go. How ominous. <laughs> what a strange way of describing it. Well, it's an ominous place. I am uh, learning new things. So, yes. Ah, uh, I assure you, most people down here are very well-meaning, myself included. <laughs> I, I only worry that when I kill my brother-in-law, he dies too quickly. And I, I've been promised the Hecate witches, they know ways to do it slowly and more painfully. But, mm. but I'm getting ahead of myself. Of course, the followers of Tantalus, although I would advise perhaps to stay away from them, they can be very dangerous. Yes, no, we only wish to speak to one of them. We are not planning. Yes, it's uh, anyway. Uh, which, which direction are they? Oh, you just have to follow the road down into the mountain a bit further and then mm -hmm. you'll see two forks take the left one and then another fork and take the left again in fact just stay to the left wall altogether i'm just gonna insight just to make sure he's not giving me a red herring all right That's sure you can insight check him 22 on the inside <laughs> seems to be a nice young guy uh just enjoying the cavern and um giving you some sincere information uh Cadius, uh i would uh uh, I appreciate the advice. Um, I would very much like to talk to you on another occasion, if possible. Uh, would it be possible to contact you outside of here? Uh, if not, I understand. But... Oh, yes, yes. My home's in Corinth, not too far from Athens. Mm. I traveled here Are to... you staying in Athens anywhere in particular? Oh, uh, well, I'm only going to be here for a couple of days. I found a bed in one of the Agoras. Uh, it, mm. it's... Oh, yes, we, we, we are only here for a couple of days as well. But yes, ah. I will we'll look for you in the Agora. It is probably good that we talk. Indeed, yes, I look forward to it. <laughs> we have lots to discuss, I'm sure. But I'll let you get on your way. Do let me know if I can be of any more help. I'm always willing to please, except mm. my brother-in-law, who I wish upon a painful and most slow death. No. I cannot stress Can that. Can I ask why? Oh, indeed. I, uh, well, if you must know, he stole my favourite horse and ran it into the sea. But he somehow survived. For that, I wish to see him boil alive. And I've been told there is magic capable of that, so. Oh, oh yes, oh, yes, yes. Yes. 
Poor horse. But there we go. Such is life, or death as it happens. <laughs> well, indeed, I've said enough. Um, Sh shall we go? Up. By all means, go ahead. Look me up in Corinth when you get the chance. Bye, bye, I'll... bye. Good, goodbye. Good... And then he'll just watch you leave with this sort of eerily large smile on his face. Antigonus was like not listening, and as you walk back up and be like, he seemed pleasant and kind. Oh, he was a lovely guy. <laughs> ah, good, good. What did he say? Where did he say to go? Antigonus, the people in this place are crazy. You you actually go down here regularly? Well, regularly is a bit much. I was I was a bit desperate. He is happy about killing someone. That someone murdered a horse. <laughs> <laughs> there are layers to this question. Where are we going? <laughs> to the left. To the left. <laughs> Very good. Okay. I'll keep And leading. then so, uh, take it back now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two hops is... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, continuing <laughs> down this cavern that surrounds you with its darkness as you get deeper and deeper, the space between these torches on the walls gets further and further until they get scarce altogether. And at this point, you don't see any more well-to-do Greeks making their way through the, tab uh, the taverns, through the caverns. You only see the same malformed creatures that you could assume perhaps were once to call themselves among the noble of Greece. But this cavern corrupts, and they've been down here far too long and exposed themselves to things that no worthy Athenian should ever do. And these are the people that scurry from your sight until they just see their heads poking over rocks, their sort of reflecting eyes, the same way you saw in the priests following you, searching you as you make your way past them. And you can see them reflected in the light of the torches as you see them um, behind you as you make your way on. It's not long as you, you're following the left wall, as he said, or is he going to do something yeah. else? No, and, we're, we're going to follow his directions, yeah. Yeah, and sure they all thing. seem to just be looking and then not following. I will I will double check to make sure they're not trailing us. Indeed, yeah. Imagine rodents and the way that they yeah. would, you know, um, be a mix of caution and curiosity, as though they are not willing to get close to you, but they're most interested in what you're doing down here. Um, and they will be following you from time to time, perhaps a few um, dozen paces behind. Um, you'll hear the scurry of rocks, um, someone stubbing their toe, or, you know, and eventually you'll hear things like pitter pattering of bare feet on the stone ground. But as far as you can tell, there is no malicious intent. In fact, they're not even making much of an attempt to hide themselves. Yeah. I'll keep an extra eye on my, on my purse, but other than that, we'll keep moving forward. Uh -huh. You're foolish to think that these things desire drag me and not <laughs> blood rolling it. No, okay. <laughs> um, so as you get deeper and deeper into the mountain, you can begin to hear um, activity up ahead as you step to the left wall. And sure enough, around a corner, you'll see light beginning to invade the darkness and illuminate the cabin in the way that the torches just couldn't. Perhaps a larger light, some sort of fire, it would seem. Uh, the flickering of it against the cabin walls betrays its nature of being a larger sort of illumination. Uh, and through that, you can hear the sound of people. Um, say talking wouldn't be an appropriate way to describe it. But more the nattering of teeth and sort of words you don't understand. Um, does anyone tell me the languages everyone speaks quickly, if you can? I don't think anyone speaks this. Common, Elvish, it's... Giant, Goblin, and Orc. Okay, none of those. I speak common and no. Common and no? <laughs> right. No, you must have misheard me. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> common, Goblin, Orc, and Celestial. Ah, interesting, Celestial, but not, not, not quite. Not quite. Uh, common, common, druidic, elvish, giant, orc, sylvan. Holy Ooh. cow. <laughs> there are some languages here. <laughs> but there is no correlation between any of those languages and what you can hear being not spoken to each other down past this path, more mm, mm, sort of chattered, chittered to each other. As though you can hear the sort of heavy sort of clattering of teeth mashing together and making words that don't belong in any kind of structural sentence or way of the tongue. In fact, they seem like they'd be difficult to pronounce, even painful on the palate. In some ways, some sounds only elicited by biting their own tongues, and chittering their teeth in a way that would hurt. But you hear that exuding from around this corner. And so we know that that's the entrance to the Tantalus area, given the prior description. Um, if you kept to the left wall, it didn't mention any way you'd have to go through to get there. So, yeah, I'd say you can pretty much surmise 
that's the entrance to the Tantalus. That, that's the entrance. And it's brightly lit, dimly lit? Brightly lit, yeah. Okay. Uh, they were smart enough to light the entryway. That makes things a little more difficult. What's the play here? Do we go in straight away? Do we uh, stealth around? What's What do you would like to do? I'm still a little reluctant to attack people without without them having a chance to run first, especially given the motivation of those who hired us. While it was honest, uh, I do not like it. So maybe well, maybe we just has Antigonus ask him. used thaumaturgy to raise his voice next to me before? Happy? No, I'm I don't sure. think so. I don't know. Dang it. Okay. I mean, I don't know the spell, so... No. Well, I have, a, I have a spell where I can throw a voice from a distance. Maybe if we uh, stay hidden, fire an arrow or something so that they know we're serious, and then demand that they drop the dogs and run, at least we will give them a chance. I, um, I, don't, I don't mind that plan, but I wonder if you would, being a little more stealthy from what I've seen, could, could try to just sneak up and get a better layout of the area to know how many there are and true uh, perhaps we don't know if the dogs were taken by the, the peasants by the leaders we don't really know much maybe see yeah. if you could even see the dogs they yes. have them in there somewhere mm. i could also create well no this is a good plan i should scout ahead but as an alternative plan i could also create an illusion it would be stationary but it would be of these uh bony elf men and maybe they would uh, attack it <laughs> that would be interesting too if we need to draw them out that's a good idea but first if you can just give us more information I, we can wait yes. here and, and wait for what, what you see and uh, <laughs> I don't suppose any of you worship Roman gods but any blessing before I leave <laughs> Prometheus will always guide you friend and I'll touch you and give you a uh, guidance but only lasts for a minute so good luck cool <laughs> And well, I, I will stealth fast. A minute's all Pruitt needs. <laughs> okay. I actually don't have expertise in stealth, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> hey, man. Congratulations on being the first rogue in the entire history of D&D &D to not have expertise in stealth. Thomas okay, was a so ranger. I'm, I'm going then. Is anybody? Yeah. I'm going to yeah, drink water out of this joke like an ancient Greek. Okay. <laughs> True <laughs> glasses. <laughs> I'm immersing myself. Um, so, yeah, we were in a very tense situation and I ruined it. So, go ahead, Brick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'll roll my stealth. Yes! 23! <laughs> All right, sure. Um, make me a perception check. Hey. Nice. 21. All right. As you begin rounding the corner, you'll see. Um, a very thin piece of twine has been drawn tightly across from side to the cabin, from one side to the other side of the cabin at around sort of ankle height. It seems to be attached to a very small metallic um, hook that's been, um, so where the, uh, the twine sort of immediately jerks upwards going vertical and you'll see it's attached to, again, um, something else, a collection of wooden planks upon which have been very precariously placed a collection of boulders, very small boulders, perhaps around the size of a football, but a, mm -hmm. like a, and around like a four base stack on top of a piece of wood. Seemingly, if you tripped this, it would collapse those boulders. Um, is it easily disabled or uh, probably just not worth it? But... You could disable it by pinching it toward and then cutting one side. Sure, I'd say it's quite an easy disable to do. Yeah, would I need to roll for it or? Yes. If I need to roll for it, I'm yes. just going to step over it. I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair Don't enough. want to risk anything. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. So, yeah, easy enough to step over having seen it. Um, yeah. And as you round the corner again to the sort of the, um, the source of this huge light, you'll see uh, another temple. This one far, far at the, um, in, the, in the mountain by this point. You would have stopped seeing temples some, you know, 15 minutes ago and then it would just be more dwellings but here sure enough there's got all the hallmarks of a temple that you found deep in the mountain um a dais um is on an altar 
not an altar is on a dais rather uh, and you see around it is there is a huge rectangular recess in the stonework which provides an entrance but before that the thing that occupies your view most is the slumped back of somebody in some sort of red clothing over a fire and as he passes um left to right sort of rocking you'll see you'll hear that this man is the source of this inhuman sort of um it sounds like malicious noises that he's making, but there seems to be no one else around. And he's turning a spit up on which he seems to have impaled several choice pieces of meat. Is he eating them? Uh, not right now, but it's not hard to discern, perhaps, that that's the intention. Okay. How big is the room? I'm going to say it's like... Mm, if you'd imagine maybe like a small church. So... Uh, mm -hmm. you know around like we'll say like um 35 feet that. forward and maybe 20 feet apart on either side oh very small church okay yeah so not a huge yeah. amount, just small like a little chapel yeah okay and again there are no other creatures in the room besides him no but there are statues of other creatures it's notably how many statue, statues two statues two of them through it two statues of two dogs with two heads of two dogs okay yeah <laughs> they've been haphazardly sort of balanced not attached to the stonework that they originally belonged to but the crumbling that happened when they were separated has made it so that they don't stand even anymore and one is slumping to the side and ones are simply propped up against the wall uh, do they appear still or are they making any movement they are stone, it seems. Okay. Um, and they're detached from each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. And as you're going on, you can still hear this sort of <laughs> and all these sort of sounds that you assume is some sort of language. It's not just simple breathing. There is cadence to it. But again, the man is facing away from me, uh, sitting down. Yeah, you can just see the top of his head and what what remains of some black, greasy strands of hair, but he's predominantly bald. This sort of hangs around the lower rim of his hairline. Do I get a look of the limbs? What do they look like? Um, Sort of slumping down. Make, make a perception check. Okay. Yeah, that's cocked. That's a 16. Seems to be of regular humanoid size. Certainly some so, but the limbs are norm. They do the limbs look like a normal human? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say so. Okay. Okay. Um, I will make my way back. All right. Sure thing. Now, where's my thing? Okay. So you make your way back, and you, I assume you easily step over that that trap once again. No, this time I'm going to activate it. <laughs> Thank you, Carl, for pointing out my ridiculous question. <laughs> okay, yeah, you make it back to the party. Okay. Uh, it is uh, only one man making all the noise. He's alone on a table, seated facing away from us, and there are the two statues of the dog, so they are separated. No one else? No one no else. No one else. It did not... Uh, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, Harry. Did this even sound like a language, the way it was clacking? Or did it sound like nonsense? <laughs> um, <laughs> it sounded like nonsense. That much is undeniable. However, okay. <laughs> however, the pauses and the repetition of certain words, or if you can call them words or sounds, strike of a language okay. of some kind. He's talking to something that is not there. Seems like well, something you can't see. That, yeah, that sounds a little bit like there's something else going on. Though he could be trying to figure out what word will awaken those statues, I suppose. He, that is true. Mm. Uh, do any of you have any abilities that would distract him long enough to simply leave with the statues? Or contain him? I could contain him, yes. I do believe Kara's also got something that uh, kept that manticore from leaving as well. Yes, I could contain him. Perhaps your um, your illusion you were talking about could distract. It would not distract for very long, I don't think. It is stationary, and it can make no noise. So, Or it can be a noise with no vision. Maybe we can just put him to sleep. That would yeah. work if... Are you capable of putting very powerful things to sleep? Because we do have to keep in mind this man uh, 
stole from a temple with no consequence. He is probably Perhaps somewhat capable. A powerful Pruitt. Uh, no, I know that, but uh, without the memory. Do you think you could do this, or after this? Oh, I don't know. Well, it's one way of finding out. True. We could try uh, that. Let's first. have some. Well, let's have some backup, backup plans. Plan. Yes. If Herodotus will try first. What is our second option? Oh, we hit uh, him over the head. Trying to uh, entangle him uh, from Kara, and then I can try my my um, stationary spells to hold him back. Okay, that would be the plan. And uh, should Herodotus fail, at the same time you two are doing your effects, I will also um, put out my illusion. Um, so given the size of these statues, I'm going to guess that we need one person to carry each one, assuming yeah. we're just hoisting them out. Oh, they look pretty heavy, man. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. So I'm going to relay that. Um, which two of us are going to carry the statues out? I think I might be able to carry one. I could take the other. That would leave uh, Kara and Herodotus without the defense, possibly. Or with oh, more no. defense, because their hands are free, right? Yes. Um, yes. I only, well, I'm concerned for Herodotus. He has no armor. Of course, you have that uh, magic, but it's not the same thing. <sighs> okay. Back. I don't need to penetrate the room. You guys can be uh, toward the edge of the the outside get away a little quicker hmm. okay well let's go and try this plan let's go stealthily um there is a tripwire that uh, activates some falling rocks i will point it out uh, thank you for mentioning that that would have been bad <laughs> <laughs> i uh, knew it he's trying to kill the party <laughs> tpk falling rocks yeah. that's uh -huh. the classic stealthily, then yeah we're going stealthily you're going stealthily I want yep. some stealth rolls, then. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound that mean about it. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, not too bad. 17. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, I got a 18. Kara got a natural one, didn't you? No, uh, natural 20. Oh, natural 20. Ooh, oh wow. You guys will make up for my good. 10. Ah. <laughs> rogue is good. Yeah, sure. Bro, <laughs> yeah. you just like, hit your feel your like, sword clatter on the side of the cave, but uh, it doesn't interrupt the chattering that you hear coming from around the corner. And yeah, you guys are pretty stealthy, pretty good, at, pretty sure footed as you each tiptoe over this trap and make your way around the corner. And sure enough, true to Pruitt's description, see a man sort of roasting several uh, cuts of meat across this huge fire that he's erected at the entrance to this temple. Uh, and indeed, either side of the entrance to the temple, you see where he's placed these two statues. Okay. Going to look at Herodotus. <laughs> I will cast sleep. All right. Go ahead and cast sleep, Herodotus. That's See what happens, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. Second this, level. this is nuanced to DM me. Yeah, out of character. <laughs> there's no way this is going to work. But <laughs> yeah. Second fun. level. So when you cast a spell using the spell slot, second level, roll an additional 2d8. Yeah. So it's 78 you get to roll total, I believe. Is it? Really? Bloody hell. Yeah, because the base is 5d8, and then for each additional level, you roll an additional 2d8. Yes, sorry. Oh, God. Have no save. So it's not things. unusual to use an actual calculator for rolls like these, rather than actually rolling 7d8, if you want to do that in roll 20. I've already Maybe. started. All right, I fair enough. If you want. <laughs> no, no, go ahead, if you've already started. It's time to roll of, the dice. Yeah, it's just sort of like everyone's watching you. Gonna whisper over to Antigonus, this is a very long spell. <laughs> 30, 37. <laughs> At least what he's you being see? quiet. 37. Yeah. 37. Uh, do, 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 do. 78. Ha, 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 ha. Oh. He feels a sensation of drowsiness come over him. As you can see, his chattering stop. And immediately he sort of pulls himself to his feet placing both hands on the uh, ground before him and just pushing what remains of this meat into the fire. And as he stands, he sort of staggers a bit, moving one, one side to the left, one side to the right, but he catches his foot and then he runs a hand across his scalp and turns to face you, Herodotus. And that's where we will roll initiative, please, on this guy, because 37 is not enough. Yeah, figures. 
All right, sure. But that we'll get back to that after the break. After the break, we're doing a break. <laughs> Before Yay. that happens. Yeah, just so you know, we're doing a break. Bye, so guys. see you in a bit. Join us back in 10 minutes where we'll discover <laughs> um, how Herodotus has killed the party. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Pantheon with me, Harry, <laughs> the DM. Um, and we are just rolling initiative as the party uh, snuck up and attempted to s put to sleep this person that was chittering in a language that was um, horrible to their ears, but they didn't quite make it. Um, but yeah, we're rolling initiative for it. That's a 21, is it? Mm hmm. All right. Uh, I just need one from Kara and one from Herodotus. I don't yeah. have a sheet set up in roll 20. Can I, is there something roll I can with, type to? Well, you can roll on with your dice and then I'll put you on. Okay, I rolled a 19 total. Okay, and Herodotus? Uh, 14. A 14? I didn't yeah. have my character up there, but then it just disappeared. But let's put him on a battle map. Because battle maps are fun and I always forget to use them and I get like into the eighth round of combat and I'm like, do you guys see this? And you're like, what? And I'm like, oh shit, you're not on the battle map. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> can you see? Can everyone nope. see? Okay. Nope. No. I can see it. Yeah. Uh, you you can't see. You should definitely yeah, be able to see that. <clears throat> I can't see it. Are you sure you're not down at the bottom here? Maybe yeah, you need oh. to scroll down. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. Right. There you go. So yeah, um, it's actually your turn first. I'm actually going to put you guys here because like this is. Yeah, that would make more sense. Where <laughs> see this happening, right? So <laughs> I don't think it's working, but I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start there. And this guy's turned around to you now, and you'll see that his lips sort of like um they seem not peeled off, but it's red raw. Imagine the way like a great white shark looks, so like it's always breaking its teeth and reforming new ones. It seems like his gums are pouring blood, but um <clears throat> and he's got a very sort of um bloodshot look in his eyes as he looks around to you. Uh, and he begins rubbing his hands together. But oh, sorry, his, wrong uh, tempo. Not his turn. It's Pruitt's turn. What would you like to do, Pruitt? <clears throat> uh, so, where are the statues? Uh, they are here and here. Okay. Um, I'm going to smile knowingly at this guy, point behind him, and from behind him, like right here, well, no, like 10 feet back, like right there. Okay. I'll even walk into the room to do this because I think it's only a range of 30 feet that I can. So boom, boom, oh, one, two, three. Four. Yeah, so right there is going to appear illusion of the bony elf man hypno guy. All right. And bony the elf. illusion is going to have his arms out extended like he just cast a spell, but is just looking very confident and smug. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, so it's a minor illusion. Is that what you're doing? Minor illusion, yep. Sure he, thing. If he wants to disbelieve it, I mean, he can disbelieve it all he wants, but if he wants to confirm that it's not one, he has to use his action to make an investigation yeah, check. Sure thing, absolutely. Um, yeah, sure. I don't quite have a token for that. So I will use a token of this one who looks kind five, of like ten, maybe ten, ten, like ten. that may look. I will you know? actually put that one square back. Sorry. Just sure. get him away. All righty. <laughs> Indeed. Right, so um, does that end your turn, Pruitt, there? That ends my... Well, no, actually, it doesn't. Bonus action, I'm going to use my... What's the feature called? Uh, it is uh, insightful fighting feature. Uh, I'm going to make an insight countered by his deception check. See if I can sneak attack him. All right, well, he'll also roll rounds. a flat three. He rolls a 14. I rolled a 16. So hey, I they... can, uh, for one minute, I can sneak attack him as long as I don't have disadvantage. All right, sure. Except, can you? Yes, you can. Not sure why. No, okay, he'll use his ability, uh, Dark One's own look, and add a d10 to his saving throw. Ooh. We can only do it once for long rest, so here we go. And he got a six, so his increases to 20. Okay, yeah, so that prevents <laughs> it. Yeah, unfortunately. Sorry, I feel bad doing that. I, it it isn't a saving you. throw. No, it is an ability that. check, but uh, it's it's but okay. It says he can do that. He can do it on an ability check. Oh, an ability saving. check. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Cool. That okay. Runs, um, I yeah. stand corrected. Um, yeah. it Indeed. Indeed. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, does that end your turn? Uh, yes, it does. Yep. Sure. So, as you try and do this to him, you'll see like um, this sort of 
the red smoke begins to emanate from the insides of his robes and whatever it is you try to do to him just seems um like whatever it is that this man prays to seems to be um protecting him a bit more from you than you'd like but okay uh kara it's your turn what would you like to do i'm gonna first move up kind of ah closer to pray with here okay now i can see <laughs> okay um just and... remember the stream can't see it because I can only see what I see. Oh, right. Well, we'll say that you start the game here then. <laughs> yeah. If that helps. Yeah. Sure. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and just cast Entangle on him. Very well. Is that a deck saving throw or a strength saving throw for me? Let remember. me double check. Pretty sure it's deck. Strength check against my spell oh, save DC. How about that? It is strength. He got a 10. Ooh, I think I did it. Yeah, so he needed a 13. Oh, ooh. Um, is that a range of 20 feet by any chance? A cube of 20 feet? It is. Okay. Would that be accurate for where it may be? Yes. Okay. I'll uh, there, like that. Okay. Uh, and like that. Okay, does that end your turn as he is entangled or he is uh, restrained or what was it? Is restrained? Uh, yeah. All that right. Is it. Sure thing. Absolutely. So he is restrained as these sort of roots begin to penetrate through, I'm guessing, the um, stones of the temple from the deep, deep earth. Yeah, and they would have like kind of come up between the cracks, like um, mm -hmm. grass growing between rocks and things and just at him. Yeah, sure. And he has his feet wrapped in it. So, sure. Um, is that any turn it does, isn't it? Right. So, Herodotus, yeah. it is your turn. What would you like to do? Um, mm, mm, mm. Can I see what this thing is? What thing? What he? What creature he is? Yeah, sure. Roll a nature check, but I'll make it like your turn, right? Because oh, if you're trying yeah. to discern what it is. Closer. Yeah. That, 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 um, that, that, that. Is it like, what, like a full round action, is it? To... So yeah, you'll is. still have a bonus action, but I'll make this your action if you wanted to make a closer inspection yeah. of what it is. A nature check would be 17. 17. Okay. It's a rare creature known as a human, but he looks pretty deformed and stuff. So, yeah, you know he's a human, although he looks pretty haggard and pretty, um, he's seen better days, maybe, but he's indeed a human. Hmm. Do you have any bonus actions you'd like to do, or? No. All right, sure. Does that end your turn? Yeah. All right. Uh, Antigonus, it's your turn. Sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to make my way to what I think is my statue, since Prue went the other way. So I'm going to go, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, right behind this sort of column here. Okay. And then um, I am going to... Hmm, what's the range of this? Let me see. Uh, 60 foot range, so... He's in range of that, sure. He's in range, and I'm, I think I'm going to aim it to where it hits him, but also goes behind him. So fairy fire is what I'm casting. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. Nice. So it's a 20 foot cube, so 5, 10, 15, 20. If I aim it sort of back here, yeah, behind him, maybe we'll do it more sort of towards this corner here. Yeah, Like, right, right. like that, but it hits him, so... Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So Twenty uh, foot cube of. So you see, um, uh, Antigonus will grab his holy symbol, and um, suddenly it, it glows in a sort of a pinkish green color, and these sort of sparkles emanate from it, little like little firecrackers, and they pop around and illuminate this cube here, a fairy fire hitting him and everybody else. All right, sure. And he does advantage on attacks made against him, but he makes a save, right? Um, any creature in the area when the spells cast is outlined if the in light if it fails a dex throw yes all right he has disadvantage on this because he is uh, restrained so he will roll a t 18 Ugh. holy yeah. crap all right. <laughs> so unfortunately that does not take effect him but he will make repeat this check if I give he starts his turn here again right um I don't think so no any, yeah I think it's just one cast yeah all right unfortunate for you then <gasps> Okay. Oh, all right. I tried. Um, so it's his turn now. And um, 
he will spend an action to sort of let out his um, hand from one from under his robes, and you'll see that it's lacking fingernails, but only recently, as there seems to be tri- blood trickling down his hand still, as he sort of gnawed his fingers almost on one of them to the bone. And he points that finger to one of the um, statues, and he begins chittering again in the language, but you've only done one, one word that sort of stands out from the others, and he just sort of says, Cerberus! And sure enough, one of the statues will indeed begin to um, sort of separate itself from the stonework. It seems to bleed out of it and take form. Uh, right in front of the statue, separate from the statue itself, there is a two-headed dog that seems to come out snarling. And he drags the finger that he's pointing at that and points it to you, Antigonus. So I can put this guy on the thing here. That's separate from the statue, you said? Or that uh, is yeah, the yeah, statue? No, no, that is not the statue. It is separate uh, from the statue, yeah. Interesting. Um, which will roll its turn uh, and get a 10. <laughs> so not fantastic, but um, oh, yeah, boy. that's above him. It's oh, not his crap. turn. <laughs> so, all right, that will end his turn because he can't do anything else because he's restrained and stuck and he has to spend an action to get away. So that's his turn. Pruitt, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Ah, oh, geez. Oh, man. <laughs> um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at this point, I don't think he's going to run away. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, incite him again with my insightful fighting feature. So have okay. him make a deception check. How many uh, times can you do this insightful fighting feature? I can is do it, it as many times as I want. All right. Okay, cool. Um, yep. So he makes a deception check, which is his charisma. He gets a 17. I got it. Probably wouldn't matter anyway. I rolled a natural two for a total of eight. Ah, so unfortunate, unfortunate. That's okay. This guy's um, pretty charismatic, unfortunately. Yeah, I figured. Despite, despite my entire description of his appearance, he's exceptionally charismatic in oh, his own life. I thought he was a handsome okay. guy. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly turn to everyone and just say, new plan! And I'm going to draw out my short bow and shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, absolutely. Uh, let's take a five foot step up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, attack roll. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh, jeez. Uh, that's a 11 to hit. 11 does not hit, unfortunately. Oh, wait, advantage, right? Because he's restrained? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, so sure, go ahead, roll advantage. That's out of the thing. Oh, worse. Yep, nope, I had missed. No, ah. no. Yeah. <laughs> It just passes by and it just goes straight through your own illusion behind it. But it does, he doesn't seem to notice, though. Um, cool. <laughs> yeah, does that end your turn? Yep. All right. Um, Kara, it's your turn. What would you like to do? I am going to stay right where I am. Mm-hmm. And I will take my staff and kind of swirl it around in the air a little bit and kind of have some of the sort of mist from the air will start to congeal. And then I'll shake it over my hands and have that ice knife form and throw the ice ah, knife at him. Very well. Uh, let's have the attack throw first then, I guess. And then I'll have him roll a deck save. Okay. Which he rolls at disadvantage because he is a uh, thing. Look, he, got a, he got a six. I <laughs> uh, rolled a 15 total. 15 total. So that's, um, that that will hit him. Yeah, actually. Yeah, that is that will definitely hit him. As it just, um, yeah, the ice knife will hit him. Sure. So, okay. You have to roll the damage of the ice knife for piercing, mm-hmm. and you have to roll the. Um, he failed his saving throw to go against the cold damage as well, so you can roll both for full damage to him. Okay, so I actually rolled a ten on the piercing, so nice. that's awesome. And Exceptionally then nice, yeah. The cold damage, two d six, uh, one and a six, so seven. All right, absolutely. Um, yeah, so the ni- ice knife sort of hits him, and how does this? sort of happened to him because it's an exceptional amount of damage so i just want to see like how so, <laughs> she had good aim and it mm-hmm. just hit him right in the chest and just exploded out so that ice kind of sunk in and then just pieces flew out everywhere just shards of ice yeah absolutely red shards of ice as they are soaked in his blood <laughs> piercing him so yeah absolutely very cool um is that any turn amy yep that's it all right uh, herodotus it's your turn what would you like to do Right, so when he said Cerberus, only one of them activated, yeah? Yes. Right, okay. I'm going to... I'm just going to go... I'm just going to... 
get hold of his staff and just point it and let a jolt of lightning come out. All right, sure thing. Who are you aiming at? The man. The man. All right, very well. Go ahead and attack the man. The disheveled, ch ch disheveled man. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 17 on a dice. I would have said that would hit. That's definitely a hit. Yeah, indeed. Do you want, yeah, you, it's 17. Mm -hmm. But you want to roll again in case you get a dirt crit. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, nope, that wouldn't have been a crit. Uh, it's yeah. only three damage, though. Uh, three damage, sure. Um, just sort oh, of singes his cloak. Damage, yeah. Let's add a, a, the equivalent of like a hand buzzer on him. But wait, no. The hand buzzer do three electric damage? Probably not. <laughs> what is a hand buzzer? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> oh, the little, like. <laughs> yeah, you know, that thing. Um, I don't think there's three damage to somebody because that's like a commoner has five health. So that would <laughs> insinuate that a hand buzzer would almost kill a man. But okay. Um, okay. I'm going to stop talking about hand buzzers. <laughs> and I'll say that this guy takes three damage. So thank you, Rodriguez. Nice. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? Um, no, he'll stay there where he is for now. All right, sure. Uh, Antigonus, it's your turn. What would you like to do? So, just a quick question. When we saw the dog transform, did it? Is it like a stone dog coming at me, or is it sort of becomes flesh? No, it's extract. It's very fleshy. Indeed, it is. Okay. Okay, and it's okay. the stone is still there, you said. Yeah, this thing sort of had the stone had cracks in it and this sort of bled out of it and then it took form into the dog. Got it, got it. Okay, I understand now. Um, all right, so then I will reach, uh, Antigonus will reach his hand into his clay pouch and just a big muck of clay claw pulls out of it and he casts Maximilian's Earth and Grasp on the dog. All right, <laughs> sure thing. Um, that is a save for me of some it description. Is, it is dexterity saving throw. I got a, I got a three. There we go. That's better. <laughs> is a three save? Um, <laughs> it does not. All right. So what um, happens to him exactly? He takes 2d6. Um, I'm sorry. It was a strength saving throw. It wasn't dexterity. My fault. But I'm sure. That's it's okay. Seven. On the dice, that would have failed anyway. Um, so he takes um, seven bludgeoning damage. Very nice. Okay. And then he is restrained. Um, so he has to make a... Strength check against my spell date, save DC on his turn um, to escape. Is that um, his action if he does that? Uh, let me see. As an action, I can call it to yeah. break out. They can make a strength check. Yes, yes, it is. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. For a different creature. And yeah, so the, but the claw could maybe grab something else. So he's restrained. And then I will turn around and look at the um, look at the man and I will make some uh, friction in my hands and use that heat to push a sacred flame over on him and a green flame bursts around them. All right, sure thing. Um, and that is a... Oh, wait, hang on one second. Is that a bonus action or is no, that... No, I was going to no, say it's that's an action. action. Never mind. Sorry, my fault. I can't. There aren't yeah. any can try and... bonus actions. <laughs> you, you try and do this and then Pruitt looks across from you and says you can't do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, he's right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> yeah, so I will simply, um, seeing that the dog is restrained... I will just position myself behind this pillar to try to get a little bit of cover. And sure just... thing. Well, it is the dog's turn. And indeed, as Munch, he will try and get out using his action. Strength, did you say? Mm-hmm. All right. So he's got okay strength. Uh, a nine. <laughs> not... All right. Yeah, so he's struggling and sort of like growling with both heads against this um, this claw, which is sort of um, shaking him, I guess, uh, pinning him down. Excuse me. Yeah. But okay, does that end um, its turn? It does. Why am I asking myself questions? Um, <laughs> all right. Does that end its turn, dog? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. So <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's this guy's turn now, this fella that you've seen with the uh, the nasty sort of face that's uh, with the nasty face. I can do better than that. With the, <laughs> with the bloodied face that tells the tale of, te of terrible rituals conducted only in the darkest of places. Oh, um, that kind of face. I that, see. that face. You know the face. You know, you've been to Walmart before. Right? Um, yeah. <laughs> so he's going to cast a spell, will he? Let's see. Oops. Can't move him. Uh, yeah, he'll cast a spell. Uh, on Basically, he'll put both of his bleeding hands together and they'll begin to sort of coagulate the blood between them until it seems to get warmer and warmer until steam starts to sort of emanate from its hands and it'll push them both forward and on you alone Pruitt he's going to cast their burning hands okay deck save yes Coo -coo. Uh, that's a that's a 12 on the save good question um, his save is a 
It's a 13. Mm. Yeah, that's a fail. So, yeah, oh, well. So, yeah, you take 12 points of fire damage. Okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and boy. indeed, that will end his turn, being unable to move okay. and not quite ready to use an action to try and break it. Instead, he can keep doing damage. So, all right. So you take 12 fire damage as it scorches you. This thing just sort of illuminates the room more than the fire ever could and seems to just like um, envelop you for a second. You are surrounded by flames, but it dissipates soon after. But you do take a colossal 12 points of fire damage. Yeah. All right. So that ends his turn. So it's your turn now, Pruitt. Yeah. Anybody looking, we can just tell that Pruitt looks like he's about half down. I mean, <laughs> geez. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to insightful fighting again. I'm going to make a insight check on him. All right, sure. Um, he will roll his. Chris, you got a nineteen. I got a twenty-five. Thank you very much. Right. Oh. There you go. Sure. <laughs> so you can make sneak attacks on him now without the. Yeah. I mean, I already, yeah, I already could because he's currently restrained. But now, for a minute, I still can. So. Sure thing. Sure thing. Cool. And with that, I'm going to fire my short bow again. Very well. Very well. Yeah. Go ahead with advantage and sneak attack. Nice. Uh, dirty twenty. Uh, that is indeed a hit. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Poor dice. Uh, eight damage. In total? In total. Oh, bro. Oh, a one, a two, and a two. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There you go. But okay, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just... so Pruitt, you know, uh, just coughs off the burn, looks at him, points up, and just shoots him in the shoulder, just point blank, just looking at him. Yeah. Uh, and then, I mean... uh, he does lodge in his shoulder and there's a spurt of blood but from his pure like blood crazed vision you can tell that anything that's not a fatal blow will be not enough to deter this fella so yeah and with that pro will take his movement 5 10 15 mm -hmm. 20 get some angles on this guy yeah that's the end of my turn all right sure thing uh kara it's your turn okay um the dog I can't see exactly where it is on my map here. Um, I think it's a pillar, right? In the way of between you and the dog. So. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look, there it is. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to move um, closer toward the dog. <laughs> and ask it if it wants to be an actor. Actually, yes. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm going to do. Oh, did I ruin that? I'm so sorry. You, <laughs> you did. That. You blew it for oh, me, Harry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I'm going <laughs> to look at the dog. Uh -huh. And I'm going to say to him, hey, if you're tired of taking orders from this dead guy, I know a guy who's got a great setup who could really, you know, help you out. And because I have, I'm a wood elf and speech of the woods, he should be able to understand me. He can't answer me. Um, I could under, I can decipher his noises and motions, but he can't like talk back, but he should be able to at least understand what I'm saying. Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> Oh terrible. my gosh. Oh, not great. 13 minus 1, so 12. Oh my god. Okay. Um, one, of the dogs, one of the dogs looks like it's listening. It nods its head in a very knowing way, but it's brought back to the reality when the other dog bites it over the other <laughs> side. And then they, they begin fighting with each other a little, but they are currently being grasped by a claw as well. You see them sort of devolve into a more sort of primal uh, behavior as they just start wrangling each other. Seems like your words fell on oh, at least one pair of deaf ears. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then um, for my bonus action, I'm mm. going to go ahead and drop my bear spirit totem. All right, very well. So um, I'll kind of close my eyes and a spectral bear is going to appear um right let's see kind of i guess right kind of in the middle of us where it'll hit all three of us that are standing here close together yeah sure um let me put a bear down hello there is a bear there a spiritual bear providing you with all the fortitude that is effort to a true being of nature such as the bear itself the hardy spirit of the bear how many temporary hit points is that uh that'll be eight temporary hit points. wow that's really good actually um so eight eight mm. not 87 eight <laughs> and eight I'll all take right 87 <laughs> yeah 87 temporary hit points <laughs> let's go found, straight to the final boss out, of the campaign we found out that stacks <laughs> that stacks with my arcane armor 
It won't, no. You can only have one uh, source no, of temporary hit it points. Stacks. It's not. What's it, that? Um, Carl's uh, found out that it actually does Yeah, stack. yeah. So, yeah, there was, there's an official document published by Wizards of the Coast that has a lot of rule clarifications. Okay. The ward is a separate entity. It cannot get your resistances or any okay. other benefits, but it is not. It doesn't count against yeah. your temporary hit points because it's separate. All right, sure. So I guess it does. Um, so I'm equivalent of like a fifth level fighter right now. Yeah, you've got the f you've you've got what I think is the technical term of a fuck ton of health. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, just as a note, because it might come into play to help antagonist, the bear spirit also gives you advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Sweet. So cool. Very cool indeed. Some might say the coolest, Sorry. but. <laughs> I'm only on 40 hit points. Anyone else like that? Jesus Christ. I mean, <laughs> by Zeus. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a wizard. <laughs> I'm a wizard. Yeah, sure. Are you really a wizard, though? I mean, like, at this point. <laughs> right. Um, it's your turn, Herodotus, then. Oh, he rips off his robes and you just see, like, a, an eight-pack underneath. Pulls out a great sword. Um, <laughs> I'll zap the guy again. Because that's not really much I can do apart from that. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Both, and I mean, both of them are entangled in some way or form, which is my speciality. Indeed. So I'll zap him, and that oh, was advantage. Thank God for that. Uh huh. Uh, well, the advantage was a ten, which is a sixteen total. Sixteen will hit. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and roll does, damage. Does <laughs> oh, great! It's two damage. Two damage. Yeah, you're chipping him away. But uh, basically, what you're doing is firing like. Little static shocks of electricity. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It looks like, <laughs> but they sort of just singe off him, and he just I'm seems trying to, to find more... the actual on proper on switch. I can't find it. <laughs> yeah, it's not starting properly. Its batteries must be low or something. So, um, but yeah, it seems to be more irritating than than anything else. But uh, does that end your turn? It does. Yeah. All right. So Antigonus, it's your turn. What would you like to do? All right. Um, I will. Um. Tell the hand to squeeze a little tighter on the dog. All and right. He has to make another strength check. Do, 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 do. A strength check for my good pal dog who got an eight. Yes, he takes another two d six. Six, six, six crushing bludgeoning damage. My word. Poor puppy. I was. And then I will move um, up to our friend here. Uh, do I have to save for that entangle? I don't know. If it's I fixed. don't think you do. It's just oh, difficult it's terrain. It's just difficult oh. terrain. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And I will pull out my mace and I will I will try to bash him in the head. All right. Sure. Go ahead and roll a mace attack. Mm -hmm. That is a twelve. A twelve. A uh, will got not advantage. hit. Ah. Oh. You've got advantage. Rats. Oh, you've got advantage. Yeah, oh, I have advantage. advantage. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a 17. 17 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Yeah, he takes four damage. Four damage. And go ahead and roll dex saving throw. Oh, great. Ooh. Oh, why? What could it mean, DM? What could it mean? Uh, what could it mean? Uh, do I have roll advantage on that from the bear totem? Just strength, you said, right? Uh, just strength, I think it is. There's no reason if you have an advantage on this. All right, so dex saving throw is 11. 11, not enough. You take the full damage of his hellic rebuke, hellish rebuke as your um, mace connects with him. He lets he throws his robes wide, and there's this, this overwhelming heat as your arm and like collides with his body, and you just feel there's no fire but the air around him it almost seems like radioactive it's burning the air and uh, you take seven points of fire damage Ooh. be thankful there's a low roll of damage for him <laughs> <laughs> all right that will be my turn very well but unfortunately fortunately you have eight points of temporary hit points right so yes down you to one more damage. damage so sean um it's this thing's turn it's going to try and get out of your stupid grasp <laughs> An 18. Uh, which, the dog? Yes. Yeah, it's a, yeah, that's a safe. Oh, wait, hang on. No, I skipped past this. Did I skip past it? No, he's next, right. So, yeah, he's out of his restraint. Yes. Uh, he finally manages to sort of shake itself enough to send this thing crumbling, this um, hand. If does it, does it stay, you can move it, right? No, it stays there, yeah. It's yeah. still there. It's, if someone gets gone. within um, 
five feet of it, it can grab it. Absolutely. And it's going to dart straight with all its movement speed, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And it's going to, both heads snarling crazily, begin to um, rear up on you, Kara. But it has used its action, and therefore it cannot attack at this turn. Um, it is round to his turn now. And um, sure enough, he's looking pretty um disheveled even for him at this point obviously the self-inflicted wounds with more for aesthetics but now you see him to actually start pouring blood that sort of soaks through his robes and makes a puddle around his feet but in a last dying attempt he will point to the other statue in the room and say the same word again <laughs> cerberus uh, we should have known <laughs> yeah <laughs> and will. will indeed point to this one and pull this thing into existence, which the same way blood seems to start bleeding from the statue until from the pool claws this thing from the hells, this two-headed dog, which is this temple's current protector, protector of this man. Uh, that will end his turn, though. Um, Pruitt, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Uh, there's a second dog next to me. Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> um, Not hmm. good. I can see another figure on the top. Who's that? Who is that indeed? It's um, Pruitt's illusion. That's the illusion the of, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's okay. the, the still, so still illusion of Bony Elf Man, number <laughs> yeah. two. That's just standing uh, there at this point. Jeez, <laughs> ah, I do not like where I am right now. <laughs> I had a plan. I'll, I'll okay. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll look at um, the disheveled guy real quick. And I'll just gesture down the hall like he should run. I'm going to assume he doesn't speak my language, but I'm going to just shout angrily, run now before you're dead. And I'm going to shoot him again with my arrow. All right. Very well. Um, Mixed messages, Pruitt. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you can roll with advantage indeed. So um, go ahead and roll the attack. That is a dirty 20. All right, sure, that will definitely hit him as you're running away and you um, sling your... Is it a crossbow you've got or is it the... It, it is a recurve bow. Recurve bow, that's the one, yeah. And you do land an arrow straight and true. Um, uh, go ahead and roll damage. It's only 19 damage, so... It's only 19 damage? <laughs> Two sixes, a four, and my plus three. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <coughs> uh, yeah, he's yeah. still up. He's still up, though? Yeah, no, okay. No, of course not. He's not. <laughs> oh, he's not up? God prove it. No, he's killing yeah. my character. Go ahead and describe how this guy meets his long overdue yeah, end. So, so point down the hall, tell him that he should run, and then just wait for an opening, and just, it's a very fast reflex. You can barely even see him. Draw the bow and fire, and the arrow goes into his armpit and into his heart. Oh, wow. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'll say he gets his armpit because he just turns to run for some reason. And then, sure enough, that's the <laughs> opening you get through the very fleshy sort of soft spot of his armpit. This goes through and you just see like only the bottom a third of the shaft poking out from his body as the whole, almost the entire arrow is just embedded in his vital organs. And he is indeed dead. Okay. Um, quick glance behind me. Is the dog still active and angry? Active, angry and hungry. Yes, in that case, I will do what any good Roman soldier does, and I will hide behind the column as a bonus action. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Your thing. Of course, the classical Roman thing. Um, yeah, okay, roll me a stealth I think they have all those columns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm telling you. They're all for hiding. Uh, it's a dirty 20 on the stealth. I've been rolling a lot out of the same number. <laughs> I will pass this passive perception. So, yeah, sure. That is a you are stealth. From this creature. Uh, right, so does that end your turn? That does end my turn, yeah. All right, so Kara, face to face, to face, to face <laughs> with this two headed dog. Uh, one of them looks more sympathetic than the other, quite eager with the idea of becoming a famous actor, but he's always brought back to <laughs> harsh reality by his brother, who is more intent on chowing down on some druid today. So go ahead, what would you like to do? Um, I take my staff and knock it against the ground and have those flowers all bloom up the length of the staff and cast shillelagh. All right, sure thing. You shillelagh that staff up. And I'm going to look at the two-headed dog, especially the head that's not really feeling it, and be like, it didn't have to be this way. And I'm just going to take a swing at him. Very well. Go ahead and take a swing. That 20 
No joke. Ooh, good job. <laughs> Roll damage then. Go ahead. Roll double damage. Okay. Double dice. I do not double damage. Kill the dog. Kill the dog. <laughs> I don't want don't to. Kill her. <laughs> All right. Uh, three on the dice, so that's six plus three. So that's a total of nine. Nine damage. damage. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, as you sort of whack the dog on the head, it lets out a yelp as though a scolded dog, and it sort of rears back again, taking a step backwards before the more vicious one again chastises its brother and takes a step forwards with its paw that it controls. That makes sense. <laughs> Would one like head control one head the right control the <laughs> They walk terribly. They walk sideways, like one head's like, we're going this way. Yeah, exactly. Maybe they take turns. <laughs> yeah, that's possible too. I don't know who controls the limbs, put it that way. Uh, but yeah, right now, it's one's trying to walk forward, one's trying to walk backwards. But yeah, it takes a whopping nine damage. Um, is that in your turn? Uh, yep. Cool. Uh, Herodotus, it's your turn. I am going to cast Normal Sleep on that dog right in front of us. Okay, Normal Sleep. Go ahead. Sorry, first level sleep. So, so it's 5d8, five, five you sure, yeah? 5d8, yep. Uh-huh. Oh, shit. I've got to re-roll one of them because it's gone. Oh, oh, that's not bad. That actually was a 1. It rolled onto a 4. So that's 2 eights. 16, 17, 20, 27. Yep. Yep. Yes. He's slept. I'm so honest. Curls up. From a one to a four, and I kept the one. How about that? Sure. He curls up in a nice little uh, ball, cozy on the temple floor, and you can just hear the steady rumble of its snoring as it is asleep. Oh, look, it's going to (laughs) sleep. I'll go up and give it squitches. Yeah, and it, <laughs> it's dreaming as well, and sort of like, and stuff. but yeah, there you go. Um, no, that my does it I'll give the nice time. head scratches, not the mean sure. head. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Um, does that need turn around at this? Yes. Okay, sure. Uh, Antigonus, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Mm, so I'm gonna try this. We'll see if this works. Uh, I'm gonna look at look at the new newly summoned dog. And knowing the new command word, I'm going to cast command, um, pointing towards the dog, playing with some clay in my hand, and I will say, Cerberus. Trying to buff it up with a command here. (laughs) Okay, sure. I see what you're trying to do. Um, Right. Well, is that safe for me? I guess so. Uh, Yes, it is. What save is it for me? And is it a charm? Does it call itself a charm by any chance? Um... It's uh, it's got the pink symbol. I think that's a charm spell. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So it's a wisdom save, right? Wisdom saving through, correct. So he gets it with advantage because he has his two-headed feature. Advantage Some, uh, against blinded, charm, deaf, and frightened, stunned, and knocked unconscious. So right. um, he'll roll a seven. Why am I rolling initiative? What am I doing? <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> Why, what, 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 are we, what am I even doing, man? His like, mind would, is very dexterous. I, yeah, that was a seven <laughs> and a two. Oh, man. Like, I, I, very appropriate, I roll a two on wisdom at this point, because my brain, my brain just went, okay. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, uh, he Dang. rolls so low that he is indeed compelled to uh, command spell, but do you just say Cerberus to him? Uh, I'll say, uh, yeah, I'll say Cerberus. You're mine. All right, and it will react to that on its turn. Okay. Which is um, now. I'm also also going to move. Uh, okay, I'm going sure. To move near my grasp over there. All right, sure. Um, and indeed, <laughs> it just start sort of moving you towards are mine. you. Let's see. It just start <laughs> moving towards you with all its movement speed, with forty to there, and then it will dash to get to twenty feet. Uh, it is snarling ravenously and it's sort of biting as it's charging you, but it has dashed to get to you. So that will end its turn as it runs straight past Pruitt. Like okay, hang side on a of it kind of thing. Does it look aggressive to me as it runs up to me? Um, yes. It looks it looks very aggressive toward me. Ah, shit. Yeah, <laughs> it looks extremely aggressive. It's like aggression right. personified. If it looks aggression aggressive toward me, then it's mm-hmm. going to the 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 grasp the hand is the clay thing that, that was uh, right above it is going to grab it. Where is the clay thing? Isn't it like here? 
Um, it was exactly on the dog that was summoned before. Okay, if it's not within five, it's got to be within five feet. All right, if it's, I think it's within five feet. That's fine, sure. Um, is that a reaction then? I mean, how does that work? It's the dog's turn right now. Let me, let me read the spell. Hold on. I, yeah, I think sure. it does it automatically, but let me double check. Um, oh, there's a wasp on my computer screen. Oh, God. Five foot square. I um, think that means we win. Have you got any fire? <laughs> you need to burn it kill it with fire. Uh, I don't know. This is, a, this is a level of intensity, indeed, that I didn't sign up for. Oh, no, you're right, Harry. Sorry, I have to use an action to make it grab it. So Yeah, yeah I don't think you can do it on the okay. dog's turn. I thought it was automatic. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so, Pruitt, it's your turn. Oh, no, wait, this guy's asleep, so he can't act. So, yeah, sure. Pruitt, it's your turn. What would you like to do? I'm going to shout out to uh, Antigonus. <laughs> Antigonus, I don't think that worked! And I'm going to fire. <laughs> you're going to... Advantage, because I'm hidden. Yeah, absolutely. That is a 22 to hit. 22 will indeed hit. And you're attacking this one, right? Yes. Sure. So go ahead and roll damage with sneak attack. That is 13 damage. Nice. 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 Indeed. Sort of hitting it. God damn this wasp. Ooh. Oh, God. Hang on. I'm sorry for the pause. I think there's a wasp on my back. So oh, I'm just going to, like, very carefully remove... Now, I'm not going to remove my shirt. I'm just going to play D&D <laughs> and hope to fucking hell this wasp does not sting me. Kill it. I can't kill it because if I miss and it gets angry, then I am fucking screwed. Make, make a constitution saving throw, Harry. I can't. I lose voluntarily because I'm terrified of wasps. <laughs> right, okay. Um, oh, God. I feel like I, we're putting him through torture at the moment, making him, making him play one as a it's wasp. The fact that I, no, the fact that, that I can't see it. We'll look at your bag if you want. I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. find it. I'm sure we oh. could wait two minutes. What's Hang going on. on? Okay, I'm just going to play D&D &D and I'm going to it. So no <laughs> reason to sting me. No reason to sting me, so no problem. It's not a okay. bee. What's that give a shit? They'll come and sting you anyway just because they're bored. I don't get in Lee, here. you're not helping. You're not right. helping. <laughs> right, anyway, um, did you take a turn for it? I've completely lost now. Yeah, I, yeah, I shot him. I, I sneak attacked him. I'll say that I shot him kind of in the in the, the neck area of one of the heads. I ran 25 feet forward, and for my bonus action, I'm going to do my insightful fighting on the dog, so have it make a deception check. Okay, sure. Um, the dog will roll its terrible charisma and get a four. Cool, yeah, I got a 16. Oh, yeah. I'm going to use a, a 15, so, yeah. I'll use a purple thing for this, uh, cool. this, this thing. So, yeah, he has now um, always had... I know it's weakness. Yep. Against him, yeah. So... Um, Kara, it's your turn, unless you'd like to move any more there, Prit. No, I, that's all my movement. Okay, sure. Um, right, uh, it's your turn, Kara. What would you like to do? Having the sleeping hound in front of you now, this two-headed hound. Um, let's see. I think I am going to leave the other dog to everyone else, and I'm just going to pet this one. All right, so you can spend your action to pet the dog. If you wish. Solid yeah. choice. I, I really, I want to make friends with it. I really want to convince it to come back with me to be part of Aesop's crew. So I'm just going to show it some love. Very well. Very well, indeed. Um, I should have brought this up before, but you, I don't think you'll be able to speak with it, actually, because it's not a beast. And I think your spell's yeah. specific to beasts, right? So Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, Damn. unfortunately, this is classed as a monstrosity, so... Not a beast, unfortunately, but you can try. I mean, well, I'm still gonna scritch it. Yeah, sure, you can definitely scritch it. There's no, there's no harm in scritching it yet. But okay. Um, oh god, I don't know where this wasp is. <laughs> so really will terrible. Antigonus and Pruitt do all the work? I mean, <laughs> hey, I entangled that guy. The sounds of battle. <laughs> the my, I sniped it a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's uh, your turn, Herodotus. What would you like? Oh look, there's another one, and I'll. Uh... Try and send that one to sleep. Oh, that one's oh, right. a shit so Oh no! Wait. Oh no! What? Is it concentration spell? <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. No, I, no it's <laughs> not actually. Oh, it's not. Wow. It's not hypnotic patterns. So ridiculous. Twenty-two. Uh, Twenty-two uh, on the one next to Antigonus. Yeah. Does not put it to sleep, unfortunately. Not quite. Oh, I can reveal now. You got a 37 before. Do you know what that guy's health was? It was 38. Ha-ha, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <was it? laughs> Woohoo! 
Okay, yeah, but this guy's got more than you can assume to be 22 hit points. Mm-hmm. So um, he does not fall asleep from your spell. You can see it sort of affecting him and getting dizzy on the stairs, but it does manage to plant all four paws on that study rock and keep itself aloft. So um, does that end your turn, Herodotus? Uh, yeah. All right, Antigonus, it's your turn. Oh, God. Sorry, I don't... <laughs> just find it quickly okay. so you can... Re- I'm okay. I, no, I'm okay, honestly. I just... <laughs> You're making me itch. Um, I know, yeah. I can feel itches, and I'm not sure if it's the wasp or not. So So I am going to step back in this corner and see if it attacks me as I move away. Uh, It does. So it's going to make an attack. Um, All right. So we'll do a multi-attack bite for a 12. Miss. Both heads will strike out at you, and one will hit for a 23. That does hit, yes. Okay, you take seven piercing damage, and you must make a DC 12 constitution saving throw. Oh, nope. I got a four. A four, all right. As it sinks its fangs into your one of the heads, does at least, instead of blood coming out, it seems to be something going into the wound as the teeth start to bleed from the, like, the chops of the... Uh, of the monstrosity there and they seem to infect your wound and you can see it sort of getting into your veins and spreading up your arm but um but now for the time being it's not spreading very quickly so um you are poisoned so now you are poisoned as well. poisoned okay yes. um oh god sorry okay <laughs> you're right. You're right? <laughs> yeah it's almost landed on my arm uh, we're okay uh, all right so, uh i am poisoned and then yeah. i will say Damn it, dog, I tried. And I will <laughs> scrape my mace across my shield. The sparks fly in the air and turn a big green bolt of guide. Guiding bolt toward the bolt of guide. Guiding bolt toward... <laughs> a big uh, green bolt of guiding bolt to the bolt of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bolt of guiding bolt of... Yeah, it's cool, yeah. man. It's cool. Hey, man. Yeah, it's cool. We can all agree on that. So go ahead and roll that attack roll. Uh, that is a 27. Uh, that is indeed a no, hit. Sorry, 24. 25. I was going to say, is that not even a crit? I thought that would have been a crit. But, uh, yeah, 25 is a hit. Yeah, sure. So go ahead and roll that damage for me. I'm a mighty uh, fight. I'm a you know mighty warrior, and I can't hit. Her, right? 16, 16 yeah. radiant damage. 16 radiant damage. Very nice indeed. As this nice. thing just lets out this huge howl throughout the whole um, sort of temple and down the caverns, as this um, bolt of light. Is it a bolt of light? Is it? Oh, what does it look like? <laughs> it's a guiding bolt of green, bolt of light. Um, yeah, it's like, it's like green now. flame sparks that sort of congeal together and blast it. Yeah. Hang on. It's gonna crawl up your leg and sting you on the nuts. So you might want to. Oh, uh, if I if I miss it, it's gonna just just go insane. Just get it, man up. <laughs> no, I can't get it where it is right now. I'll try and angle it. So, can you see it? It's that. It's oh god, right? Okay, right, I'm gonna put that back. This <laughs> right. is not like being on camera. Um, right. um, anyway, anyway, uh, yeah. Sorry, Antigonus. Explain how your guiding bolt looks. <laughs> I think everyone gets it. Sparks fly from my mace and my shield. These uh-huh. little sparks become green. They congeal together and they blast towards it in the radiant. Yeah. <laughs> Great, yeah, it, and it does hit, and they get this thing just so, so the green of the fire sort of spreading across its fur, which sort of has an oily texture to it anyway. So it sort of makes a well sort of kindling across its skin, and it does. Uh, the flame takes a huge amount of damage. Does that end your turn, Antigonus? That will be it. Yes. All right, it's its turn now. And it's going to pursue you now, having a taste for you, Antigonus, and you're backed into a corner. It just sort of um, stalks in, like heads to the ground, and it lunges at you with both heads. Um, Let me find this thing again. There it is. Uh, And they're both going to bite for a 9 and a 14. Uh, Both miss. All right. That's great for you. Um, Weave it in the corner. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and they do indeed both miss, both catching their faces and their teeth on the stonework behind you into the side. But that ends their turn. So, Pruitt, it's your turn. I'm going to yell out to Antigonus, Antigonus, stand your ground! And I'm going to shoot the dog. Shoot that dog. But. Oh, it was so close to Nat 20, but it's cocked. <laughs> <laughs> We here at Lawful Stupid RPG do not condone animal violence. So when I say shoot that dog, you must understand <laughs> it as purely within the context of Dungeons and Dragons. I, I would like to shoot the monstrosity that is attacking Antigonus. Shoot that doggy. Shoot that doggy till it's dead. Uh, 23 to hit. 
Uh, 23 will hit, yeah. And so I will. That, that uses up the advantage of the Guiding Bolt, of course. I did roll that advantage. All right, sure thing. <laughs> I'm assuming it's dead. I'm not even going to ask the damage. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Does 16 kill? A 16 does kill. So go yeah. ahead and explain how this thing, with its attention turned away from you, meets its end. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, there's not... There's only so many ways you can kill with an arrow. Uh, the arrow will fly true, go right in between the rib cage and into the heart. And so the dog, the monstrosity, will just look up at Antigonus and collapse. Absolutely. And indeed it does. Slumps to the ground ahead of you, Antigonus, until you can sense no life coming from those four, four yellow eyes. Okay. And then assuming we're still in battle, Prode is going to go another uh, 10 feet. Um, kind of back to the pillar, look over at Herodotus and uh, Kara, and just yell out, Kara, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to do... <laughs> I'm gonna oh, do, she's just sitting there. Yeah, and I'm going to uh, do the insightful fighting bonus action on the incapacitated dog. <laughs> you certainly can, and it will instantly fail. But uh, as right, the music so change may tell you, wake up. <laughs> yeah, we are out of combat with a sleeping yeah, pooch. Yeah. There's no need to continue that. Um, but yeah, so... The temple has a deathly silence for her. The only sounds that emanate now are the same roar of the fire now, that which is burning the meat to a cinder, which has been left on it by this man. And indeed, as you look around, you'll see one of the unfortunate inhabitants of this of this cavernous um, sort of undercity of Athens um, has had his leg amputated um, very crassly. And you could assume that perhaps that's what this guy was eating, um, as you'll see several bones sort of around and... Um, this certainly, as you look closer to that charred flesh on the fire, seems to be in a bit of a leg shape. If that makes sense. But yeah. Um, so Good all you guys have to do is the sort of snoozing um, death dog, as they're known. I'm going to uh, loot the robe of the archmage off. <laughs> uh, the archmage? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, right. Okay. You're making uh, a joke. Uh, <laughs> right, right, okay. Yeah, I see. I, I see. will cast I, detect magic yeah sure um casting detect magic around the first two things that you notice are the two stone statues that immediately you'll notice to have a conjuration um and a well, conjuration spell on them mm -hmm. um no need to more explain what those do um but this other point of magic is on the corpse of the man that you slayed indeed it seems to be coming from something that's stowed in his belt but um something he didn't have a chance to use it seems a uh, fun fact, the illusion of the bony elf man is going to last for an hour, and I cannot dismiss it. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. It stares at you, Antigonus. <laughs> yeah. Where, wherever you go, it's like a painting. <laughs> it <stares at> you. <laughs> yeah, it just like, follows me. Yeah. Um, I will yeah, take I'm out that keep thing. In the, down this temple. I'm going I'm to sort of investigate down here some more. Yeah, I'm sure. going to... Um, reach out to Pruitt and say, Pruitt, Well, so, so Pruitt, hand. on that note, sorry, uh, Pruitt is coming up and he's going to pull out a dagger like he's going to stab this dog. <gasps> well, that changes what I was about to do. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I <laughs> thought it might, so sorry, that's why I interrupted. <laughs> do you want to contest that at all? Are you happy to let Pruitt do that, Kara? I'm going to contest that. All right, sure. Um, say, wait. Um, He's asleep. He's not doing anything to yes, us. Yes, he's not going to stay asleep for very long. Did you see long it? Enough... You tried to befriend one. It, it, he'll, he'll stay asleep long enough for, grab, for us to grab two statues and get out of here. Yes, but he will kill other people that are here. He'll probably disappear. Would you like to risk that? I mean, there could do be... I, can I do an arcana <laughs> check on that? Uh, yeah. Indeed you can. Uh, roll an arcana... Arcana... arcana. Is a word in the English language that I'm trying to say. <laughs> Twelve. Check. Twelve. Yeah, you'll know that if it's a conjuration spell, the likelihood that it's a permanently conjured creature is highly, highly doubtful. So oh, it will disappear, it'll disappear for some time, but how long? It'd be better off killing it. It's not a real one. It could wander off and kill somebody else if we do not do it now. All right, fine. <laughs> Um, so, do I see anything else in the temple, Harry, that would give me pause? Uh, you see a indentured pool into the stonework in the ground that seems to have been filled with some kind of red substance. <laughs> is that red substance blood? <laughs> well, it is a temple of Tantalus. 
which according to his legend is ah. stuck in a pool of wine but as you get closer, you realize that it is indeed a pool of blood. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These guys can't afford wine, so they make it. <laughs> yeah. But there's, there's this, I don't, I'm, can I make a, a see, if, do I hear anything? Do I smell anything weird? Anything? Do other? I smell anything weird? Yeah. Yes. In this horrible place. <laughs> of uh, rotting bodies and stuff. And um, basically these guys obviously have eyes bigger than their stomach as they capture people to eat them and then they only get halfway through. But um, disturbingly, it doesn't seem like they're only exclusively there to eat the um, fleshier parts of bodies, but also the entrails and the giblets and the eyes and the noses. Nothing is off the menu for these fellas, but beyond these sort of discarded corpses and um, strange... Um, What's the word? Strange tributes to their to their benefactor Tantalus. You don't find anything of particular value. All right, uh, I'll rejoin the party and and sort of see the argument about the dog at this point. And uh, I agree with Pruitt. It's just an illusion. Let's let's take care of it. I obviously loot the thing. Uh, the the guy. Yeah, and the thing you loot upon getting closer to it to inspect is a mace that was attached to his belt which he didn't get a chance to use oh, it's a mace that has a long sort of black shaft uh, and it is uh, topped by what seems to be the, the shape of an open mouth sort of the concave shape of an open mouth with uh, extremely sharp human teeth straight teeth right okay so I'll uh, do you want me to roll damage for automatic crit sneak attack? Or? No, no, no. You're okay. <laughs> Go ahead and stab that sleeping dog. And I'll add a sacred flame to it as well to help out. Okay, sure. Kara, yeah, are, you, are, you, are you joining in this horrible act? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to knock it over the head with my staff. <laughs> right, sure. <laughs> and this dog's just surrounded by people. The head that I didn't like, though. <laughs> okay, sure, yeah, absolutely. Um Okay. Yeah, you guys beat this dog to death. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to do a sneak attack kicking specifically. <laughs> Very well. Very well. And uh, Herodotus, is you want to get in on this? Or are you... <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, it is dead. It is dead, indeed. I and, do um, take a they... walk up the thing and down again to see if anything else shows up magical. Uh, nothing magical, no. But you will search his body, I guess. You'll find mm -hmm. uh, 23 drachmi and a ruby. Oh, a ruby. Yeah. Who's oh, writing, cool. writing loot down? Uh, I got loot. How much drachmi was that? 23. 23. 23. Okay. 2300. 23. <laughs> a billion drachmi. Uh, and I sort of point to the statues and I say, I think we should get out of here until someone else comes back. I I don't think it's one person that's been trying to munch on all these corpses. Just me. Yes. Hey, wait, cool. hey, wait, give me a hand quickly. <laughs> uh, did you explore clear to the back of the the thing or not? I did. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. This place goes deep though, and taken and she would have realized by that point this this is not the end of this cabin. There is an exit that goes deeper into the mountain as well. Oh, okay. I'll relay that information, but um. But doesn't, no one seems to be here ready to fight, and we have a mission to get these statues back. Yes, nobody likes the work in between battles, but it is arduous to uh, carry such heavy weight. Speaking <laughs> of the work between battles, Private, give me your hand. Yes? Uh, what does she need a hand with? Your hand. Oh. Give it to me. Gonna, me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're gonna lift up the dog or something. Uh, yeah, he gives you his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to um, cast Cure Wounds. Also. Right. Uh, Could you green... have chosen a less ominous way to continue <laughs> casting Cure Wounds? <laughs> yeah, okay, so sure. I get to yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. So the, the green tattoos that are on my arm will kind of come alive and mm. sort of travel down my arm and into Prewitz, and I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds at second level. Well, that's cool. Are like this? Are these? Are the tattoos on Prewitz's skin for any moment? Like they? Yeah, transfer. yeah. So they kind of like hey, come alive really and cool. transfer, and then absorb into him. Okay, sure. And I assume they disappear afterwards, right? Or yeah. Cool. And I mean, so that's, that's gonna be plenty of healing for you because that's 17. So nice. That gets me back up to full. Nice, nice healing. Yeah, so you see Pruitt vis visually just kind of 
breathe out and the tension of the battle is finally leaving and yeah uh, looks up to you a little contemplative but then goes over to his statue to start the the task of taking two big stone statues back <laughs> over along is this a 16 mile hike or <laughs> <laughs> it's not a 16 mile hike i have Good. a statue. My infinite wisdom is DM that a 16 mile a hike is only a once a day occurrence in the sure. <laughs> yeah. So probably will we'll take um, the, the far statue. And I'm going to wrap mine in, in my uh, cloak. I'm going to actually try to kind of hide what it is a bit. Okay. As I... Yeah, sure. And you make a good job of that. Not hard to do. These statues aren't huge. They're like, um, how to best this. If you imagine like the size of a normal I've... dog. Yeah. But I'm trying to think of what dog they're like. Uh, they obviously, are more representative rather than one-to-one -one scale. So they're like half the size of an actual um, hound like this. So maybe like the size of a Springer Terrier crossed with a French Basset. Ah, yes. Am, am I being clear? <laughs> <laughs> so I will carry my poodle statue. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Statues are <laughs> <laughs> Why are all death th the death dogs always our stations? Why couldn't they just be like poodles, right? <laughs> a Jack Russell coming out. Uh, but okay. If it was a Jack Russell, I'd be bloody running. Those little <laughs> terrifying. Things, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can carry it out the temple, sure enough. You know your way back now to the temple of Hypnos. Uh, it will take you a good, you know, forty-five minutes or so to navigate back through these other temples and things. Uh, it's greeted by the same cautious, um, searching eyes. And so you finally get to sort of the area where most of the temples are. Um, indeed, you'll see um, propped up against the column outside is the um, cleric of Hypnos, who um, begins to pull himself up seeing your arrival. I'm going to say uh, you'll be surprised to know that he knew the activation word. Oh, I am not sure how he could ever learn such a thing. Inside. <laughs> I just want to know if you're blank. Inside check him, yeah. yeah. Uh, cocked. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, uh, 12. 12. Um, he seems to be telling the truth. Roughly. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I forgot. I have an ability where uh, my insight checks are a minimum of 8 because of my rogue subclass. So that is actually a 14. <laughs> oh, right. Wait, how's that? You add your thing to the 8, yeah? Yeah. Oh, right, my bonus okay. is plus six, and then I I rolled a six, but it, it's actually an eight because of my... Oh, bonus. I see, I see. Okay, uh, so what is it in total? 16? Total of 14. 14, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah he's, again, it's still like a very rough idea of the truth. He's maybe hiding something, but he's not my specifically lying. My passive is 15. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm just wanting to know if he totally knew that these dogs would attack us and he was hiding that. But like, it uh, he may have had much. an idea. <laughs> Who knows? It could have been possible. Um, yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm done. I had my fill. <laughs> uh, he'll point to either sort of these uh, these broken um, sort of pedestals that the dogs have been basically snapped from or like crumbled from, and he'll just say, "Place the dogs on the statues on the uh, on the pedestals." We will, but remember your end of the bargain, too, and I will place it up there. Of course. All will be delivered. And um, as you place the dogs, they sort of meld themselves back to where they've been broken off, and they look a lot more appropriate in this um, location than they did from where you rescued them, as they take on a stoic sort of stance protecting this door, which is still currently like a solid wall. You've done right. well. Now, our end of the bargain. And um, he'll go to the stone wall, which begins to, uh, as before, crumble into the earth, letting out this huge black sort of midnight doorway, uh, corridor that is opened up in front of you. My so it's place. a different wall? Is that the same wall? Same wall. Oh. Sorry if I'm not being clear. Okay. Do you need us or just Herodotus? You can observe if you wish. All right. Uh, do you have any popcorn? Or I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> careful, Zach. Careful. <laughs> I don't think we should leave Herodotus alone. I right. do not think so either. Yeah. Um. 
All right. Are you ready, Herodotus? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, where are we going? <laughs> Follow us. We have a place prepared for this kind of ritual. And uh, he'll disappear into the um, into the corridor. He'll follow. You're going to follow, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, so you know where this leads by now. You are in this sort of um, the catacombs of this temple to Hypnos. So you know that the open um, up the stairs to the other side of the room, if you go up, you'll be a welcome back into Athens, which at this point of time you could roughly assume to be somewhere in the late, late evening. Um, but indeed, there is another room in this place. And there you'll see in this catacombs the other cleric of Hypnos, uh, who will throw his arms wide. And you can just barely see in the dim darkness his even darker cloak takes shape against sort of silhouetted, but it's silhouette against black on black. So it's hard to sort of see, but it looks very scary. And he um, says, Ah, I see you've made it back. And the dogs, they're back where they belong. Yes. I see. And he'll look to um, his com his uh, colleague, who will confirm the fact. He says, very well. And now you are promised a reading of this man's dreams. Is that correct? Yes, with the intent of getting his memory back. Mm, we do not work in the restoration of memories but we can see what he has dreamed in the past. We were looking oh. for something uh, a couple of years ago, I think. I mean, we know he's not sure about the time, but potentially a battlefield, potentially Britannia, something in that realm. I don't know if that and helps. And a woman. That. Yes. Well, that's, that's a dangerous path to go down. I'll be dreaming about women. <laughs> <laughs> yes, many men dream of women. You may have to be a bit more specific. One he tied the knot with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, They're gonna... Sorry. Sorry. Like a <laughs> the knot thing. <laughs> That's actually quite a good pun, actually. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, that he's going to lead into this sort of much smaller room on the other, well, not up the stairs, but on the other side of this catacomb, um, in which you see just a single a single stone slab, similar to what Larkin lies on, except this one is segregated from the rest in its own room. It says, um, and they point to it, and one of the clerics will say, lie down here, Herodotus. I think so. And the rest of the priest will look to the rest of you now. And they'll say, if you wish to stay, you are welcome to. But oh, there is nothing for you to see. We will go into a deep meditation with this Herodotus. We will return in roughly an hour's time. Uh -oh. stay here do you him, have but... a pillow? <laughs> <laughs> we do not indulge in the comfort of pillows down here. I will take off my cloak that was on the dog, and before putting it back on, I'll fold it up and put it under his head. Oh, you're All a right. good boy. <laughs> they both scowl at you, having made a makeshift pillow. But they won't try and contest it. They will indeed um, take their positions. One standing um, sort of before Herodotus at his feet, and one standing behind him, behind his head, as he lies prone on this, um, on this slab of cold stone that you can feel sort of infecting through the cloth, Herodotus, as it begins to... Um, should send a chill through your entire body, as though the stone is colder than it should be. Um, and you get the overwhelming sensation of death taking over you. But it's not an unwelcome feeling. It's one of pure, serene sort of comfort as um, you begin to see not just darkness, but the darkness overtakes your eyes and you begin to drift off as one of them places the hands on your head and sort of um, gris grips your skull, thumbs on your forehead, and fingers down the side covering your ears. And you're taken into a dream. And in this dream, you see several things, several things from your past um, that seems to be the most vivid things that these sages can pull out from the vast collection of what a true genius dreams of in his many number of years on this plane. 
and you see areas of Greece that look some familiar, some not so. You indeed see the towering red sort of bannered towers of Sparta. And in Sparta, you see an old temple, older than any other and unkempt, almost the ruins of a temple, but it's inhabited. And in the inhabited temple, there is a small indenture into the ground. And you can see yourself as you step forward now, sort of having an out of body experience. You can see your own self taking steps down these steps into the earth in Sparta, but you're younger, you're so much younger. You're, you've got a full head of brown hair, no beard, and you look to carry yourself with a certain pride as you take steps down. And suddenly you're in a different area of Greece, but you certainly it's Greece, but you're not sure where. And again, you're taking a step into a door, but this time you can't see where it is. Suddenly you're transported into several areas around Greece, seven in total, until finally the vision stop and you're in Athens and you are in the later years of your life now, around middle age, you can see sort of salt and pepper, black and white, beginning to take over the otherwise what used to be brown of your head. And you can see you've gained some pounds over the course of your years. You seem to be nearing the end of your journey here and you see you're entering a cave. This cave is in the side of the cliffs of the Acropolis. You look up and you can see the Parthenon. This must have been not too long ago because the Parthenon is not such an, an old creation. Pericles himself constructed and Pericles is still in charge of Athens. So this must have been as late as six or seven years ago now. And you take a step forward and you place a hand on a door which like the temple to the uh, like the door to the temple of hypnos is nothing other than a stone wall until you say a certain word you say sonos and the word and the word echoes through the stone itself and it begins to drop down and you see yourself again taking a step into the darkness but that's all you see before you're jostled back in sort of a rewind through the images several different places from around uh, Greece you see Corinth you see Lesbos you see Sparta you see Athens as well as three locations it's much harder to pinpoint in your difficult recollection of history until you open your eyes and you are indeed greeted again by the coldness of this tomb shooting straight up in the um so looking straight up rather at the uh cold gray ceiling but it's still dim here and you're surrounded by the party and again by the two clerics that stand either side of you. It did well, suffice. What did you see? Oh. I saw lots of stuff. I saw a, a, a younger man. Myself. This is all we could offer you. If it is not have the answer, if it does not have the answers you seek, then we have done all we can. Thank, thank you. Very well. A favor for a favor, and our debt is repaid to you. We will still look after your friend here, but you cannot stay here yourselves. Well, I, I don't think you could get me out of here faster, to be honest, but, uh, Herodotus, are you all right? It is not. Hmm. I'll help him off the, uh, the slab and take my cloak and put it on. Try to guide him out toward the, the exit. Sure thing. And they'll just watch you from the same position that they were in, um, in this ritual as they, uh, as you take, um... Herodotus upstairs, and are you leaving the Temple of Hypnos? Yeah, um, just quickly, Harry. The the obviously the door that I had to say Sonos on. Where was that? What was the place um, called? It's in. It's basically a door Hypnos. embedded in the Acropolis, which is a large sort of mountain in the center of um, Athens, but more like a hill, like a hillock. It's yeah. got a flat top that's been carved out for a citadel to be placed on top, which you know to be it's, it's the Acropolis Athens, so, of Athens. Yeah. On the way out the door, uh, Pru is just going to kind of whisper under his breath to everyone, uh, <clears throat> if the uh, priests of the god of sleep do not have pillows, it would have been an uncomfortable night anyway. <laughs> well said. <laughs> also, Can we see this? We a fair point. A fair point. <laughs> <laughs> 
obviously the gods of sleep know that sleep is earned, not given. With <laughs> apparently, yeah. <laughs> sleep shouldn't be comforting; it should be a task. <laughs> um, uh, can Cara, we see this saying? place, this necropolis? You see the Acropolis? Yeah, can we see it? You say it's up on the hill, you say, yeah? Indeed you can. Yeah, absolutely. It's basically visible from everywhere in Athens. It's the centerpiece of Athens, upon which sits the Temple of Athena, the largest temple in all of Athens, uh, which is known as the Parthenon. And next to the Parthenon, you will see the statue of Athena, which is a it basically dwarfs every other statue in Athens. It is huge. So, uh, I need to go up there. Is it something you saw? In one of my dreams, yes. One of the late... Well, that's promising. It is late. Do you still want to go? We can go in the morning. Yes, I, I think that yowling would be helpful. We tried Perhaps to talk our way out of some things here and didn't go very well today. <laughs> and Antigonus, you don't look so well. That dog had an awfully nasty bite and that's not something I can help you with but you might need to seek some help for that oh I <laughs> so much adrenaline pumping in me I sort of didn't didn't think of it and suddenly yeah I do feel a little woozy <laughs> yeah looking down you'll see that although it's only been like a, an hour since it happened this bite the blackness of those um, veins is beginning to crawl very steadily up your arm mm. I um if I can get a good night's sleep, uh, see how I feel in the morning. But Prometheus has shown me how to how to deal with such things before. Mm. All right, perhaps um, Hippocrates would have space for us. I, that's the he didn't want us to come home. I wonder if uh, that includes rest. He might be able to shed some light on some of the things Herodotus saw as well, since he knows him. I believe so. It's not far from here. Indeed. Before you get too far from the Temple of Hypnos, you'll see that you're being watched by somebody who is not making an attempt to hide themselves. Um, who is it? Who they look like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> <Just like that. laughs> you're being watched by someone who not attempt to hide themselves. Who is it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's this... Bob. <laughs> 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 All right, sure. It's Julius Caesar. No, okay. Uh, <laughs> it, Back from the dead. <laughs> yeah. It's um, basically, it's a woman who's very finely dressed with sort of a collection of penetrated gold coins along sort of a tiara, a diadem that she rounds, wears round um, her pinned back black hair. Uh, she's in a robe which has a similar, sort of a golden pattern inlaid, which you can see catching the light of the moon. Um, and aside, aside from her stands an Athenian soldier. And she's got one leg crossed over the other. And upon seeing you um, exit the temple, she kicks off this sort of small stone that she's been sitting on outside and um, finds her feet. And you'll see that she's dressed in a way that's not only just amazing, like not amazing, it's better words than that. Um, it's sort of indicative of a, um, a sort of a resident of the upper city of Athens. But um, not only that, but the jewelry she wears and the clothing she wears signifies that she holds an extremely powerful position. She has exceptional clothing, like many of you have ever seen. She makes her way over. Um, Can I make some sort of check to to know what her position might be based on her clothing. Yeah, sure. Roll me a history, I think. Ooh. That makes sense. Can I? That's a twenty-three then. 23. All you can tell, really, is she's someone with a great amount of wealth. Okay. And the Athenian soldier walks behind, which may tell you as well that she would command some sort of protection from an Athenian guard. So that can tell you whatever you wish to discern from that. Yeah, well, I'm going to turn to face her and just stand very formally. Indeed. And it is you, Pruitt, that she immediately addresses. And she looks down and she says, Pruitt Romain. That is my name. I, and yours? Uh, in time, in time, I promise. Would you indulge me and follow me for a very short moment? There is something of a great importance that I would like to discuss with you as long as long with two of my friends. They wish to meet you as well. And can my friends accompany me? By all means. We welcome Then by you. all means, let's go. And she'll... Um, Turn her, her 
uh, turn around and begin walking deeper into the temple district. Um, not walking too far before she enters a small shrine with no discernible god that owns it. But as you get in, you'll see the tiniest statue of looks to be quite a scrawny um, man for a god. It's not carved with the same muscular uh, muscular uh, physique that the gods are traditionally supposed to have. This one seems more, basically more normal. It's like a normal guy uh, statue. But you'll know, uh, I say you wouldn't know who this god is purely from this time unless you want to roll a religion check. Yeah, maybe my studies would tell me. Let's see. Sure thing. Twelve. Mm, Twelve. Yeah, it's, I'd say that's enough. I think it's uh, this is the god Trivia, who is the god of you know um, information, pretty much, and um, basically trivia. You know, the useless information, you could say. Hmm. Um, there is nobody in here, and that may be the reason why it was chosen at all. Um, the woman nods to the guard who stands by the entrance, and she takes a step in and does a once around of the um, building, making sure that there's nobody there. It's a very small shrine, this, um, before she pulls back a curtain into a very sm an even smaller chamber behind it. Sort of similar to Hippocrates' alcove, um, but there are two people in there already. And she takes a seat among them, and um, across this sort of wooden table that sort of separates her and her two companions, there are, f um, well, there'll be five seats because she expected uh, yelling, but she's not there. But we'll come to that. And she just um, she waves a hand across them and looks to you, saying, "It won't take long, and we will be entirely honest with you from now on." And yeah, we will sit down. Rest of the party. Is anything else anyone wishes to be doing? Or I'll sit down. Go. Yeah, um, I'm I'm wincing. I'm trying to like, deal with this poison, but I do sit. And so. just to clarify in her appearance, is there anything that indicates that she's from somewhere else or does she look Athenian? She looks Athenian. I'll say you know that much. Okay. Just making and sure, yeah. The man to her right looks Athenian as well. He looks sort yeah. of like a younger Herodotus, this man. He's yeah, still got sort of the um, the gait of a man who has some strength about him, but he wears similar clothing to Herodotus, that is. He wears a long robe, and indeed it is garnished with um, sort of Athenian uh, patterns around the cuffs and around the center uh, and as he leans forward from the shadows, um, I wonder if anyone recognizes him. Um, My eye? You, um, with your memory, no, unfortunately. Disadvantage? With what? Uh, well, I mean, you, I'm going to say playing with amnesia, you've got to deal with the downsides yeah. of it too soon. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, um, some, some people can trigger memories, so... Mm, we'll talk about this in the downtime because this is a mechanic <laughs> we've not entirely agreed on. <laughs> so, um, anyone else wishes to, though, they can. History check or what? Uh, history would be the answer, yeah. Okay. Nat 20. 15. All right, well, with a Nat 20, Antigonus, um, you'd know this man to be Pericles, the father of democracy in Athens, and the one who is currently in charge of all major, you know, uh, diplomatic decisions made by Athens. Ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah, with, and hearing with that... the 15, do I know that? <laughs> uh, with the 15, yeah, I'd say you knew it as well. For it. He's, he's okay. a very well-known figure in Athens. And he sort of sits silently, uh, folding his arms, but placing one elbow on the table and looking at each one of you with sort of narrowed vision before looking to the woman to his right. And she's sort of staring at him and he gets a single nod. Uh, he gives her a single nod and she leans back with a bit of relief. And then... Oh, good evening. Uh, who'd you say that to? Well, the, the group. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you just, like, give me a specify. Just to everyone, or yeah, to everyone. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, and indeed, uh, we'll say that the woman responds first, and she says, uh, "Good evening, Herodotus. I I don't believe we've ever had the pleasure. Uh, my name is Aspasia, and I help uh, Pericles here with daily goings on in Athens." Oh, and then, okay, okay. <laughs> sure. uh, and she looks to her left, and uh, there is another man in full of white robes holding a golden staff, uh, which he's placed balanced against across his lap as he takes a seat and he leans back, watching each of you. And you would probably have met this person before, I think, at some point, Herodotus, and he definitely shows a sign of recognition in his eyes, at least. Um, but and the rest of you, I'd need the same history check again to see if you know who this is. It's 13. Uh, 18. 18, sure. Um, you'd know this man to be another 
pretty luminary of Athens, somebody highly respected in the city. Uh, this would indeed be the man known as Pythagoras, Pythagoras, or Pythagoras, depending on your interpretation of the pronunciation. This man is a very powerful and respected wizard from Athens. Well, what school of magic is math? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the math school of magic. Everyone knows maths and magic anyway. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, uh, Aspasia will nod to Pythagoras, and Pythagoras will be the first one to talk with much sense, at least from the three of them sitting across the table. Um, and he leans in and he says, We wish to discuss something of some importance with you. If I had to, had to guess by the company, I would guess that we are discussing politics. Not politics. We're discussing my old teacher. A man by the name of Pharisides of Cyros. I'm listening. But yeah, that's where we'll end the session for this ah, week. Wow, talk to you about Pharisides. Come on. The conversation, oh. I can't get into it, the time I have about Pharisides <laughs> of Cyros. But yeah, Perfect.